and I.O. Landscape and College Athletics. That landscape includes trust athletes out in the community making a difference and representing WVU in a positive manner. The path to success has never been more clear and your support of NIL will help pave the way. Your membership has a direct impact on the lives of WVU student athletes now and in the future. To learn more about how you can support Mountaineer Athletics, go to join.countryroadstrust.com. Hey folks, become our member of Country Roads Trust today. The air feels different on fall Saturdays in West Virginia. Familiar roads lead us on early morning drives to a place where we feel alive. And traditions bring together a fierce fan base united by the same passion, West Virginia football. As West Virginia's bank, we've been there and we'll continue to be there. United Bank, proud to be united with the Mountaineers. Try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey kids, now's your chance to join the Mountaineer Kids Club. Members receive their very own membership t-shirt with free admission to select WVU sporting events, a personalized happy birthday video message from the WVU Spirit Squad, exclusive shopwvu.com discount codes, and invitations to exclusive events and more. Join now for just $25 and don't miss out on Mountaineer Kids Club fun. Visit wvusports.com slash kids club to sign up today. at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mountaineer Nation, we need you to help us make the Coliseum a very special place this season. Your dedication to the gold and blue will fuel us. It will provide passion, energy, and a competitive drive to our student athletes. So get your tickets now. Then go recruit your friends and neighbors and let's make some noise. Let's go! Single game tickets are available now at WVUGame.com. Well, there you go, everyone. Our first look at the board as we get underway here. And you take a look at quarterback Sean Boyle. We'll talk about him in just a moment. That list continues to grow. Just most recently, Ben Cutter's name, linebacker, was added to the list. We welcome you back in. Tony Caridi along with Jed Drenning. And it's time to talk about two of the Mountaineer signees mm -hmm. who both happen to have the same last name, who both happen to have a first name that starts with the same letter, and mm -hmm. they both happen to be twin brothers. Let's jump in here and talk about the Jacksons. We'll start off with Jordan Jackson. Yeah, Jordan Jackson, Tony, first of all, they're both dynamic playmaking type players. They're explosive, they got speed, and they have a lot to offer. They play both sides of the football. When you look at Jordan Jackson, you're going to see that speed jump off the screen at you. Now, he figures to project as a quarterback, but the tape you're going to see here as a running back, and you see the explosiveness right there. As a defender, he has very active hands. He gets physical with wideouts on the perimeter. Again, you can get a sense of his spatial awareness, his explosiveness, uh, what type of playmaker he is and how it relates to his skill set and his game. But what I like about him, Tony, is on the defensive side of the football, he has incredibly active hands. I mean, he's physical on the perimeter. Remember those, those really solid Oklahoma State secondaries the last couple of years? Handsy, they were, very handsy. Very handsy. They pushed the envelope almost beyond the line, right? That's the type of football that he plays on the defensive side. He's physical. He's not afraid to dip his nose in it. And like I said, at the running back position, what you're seeing is 
He looks like a bullet train exploding through the A gap into that second level. So fast to the edge. I mean, he is a football player. He's a playmaker. Look at the dynamic speed on display right there. You don't see the kid getting run down. In the red zone, he was a weapon because of his vision and his quick cutting ability as a shoe right there. He reaches the end zone. But I think we're going to have a heck of a football player, and that's the type of body you want. Again, ideally, populating your back end defensively. And also, to the point, you saw the hometown listed there, Fairfield, Ohio. West Virginia has made a very strong attempt in this class to put together a class that geographically is close to the WVU campus, and obviously there are reasons for that. You just take a look at the history and the tradition of Mountaineer mm -hmm. football. There is a fertile piece of ground in a six-hour window mm -hmm. around Morgantown. Thirteen of these signees that we'll see and talk about in the next day or a couple of days come from within a six-hour radius, mm -hmm. and chances are that helps you in retention of those sure. players. I mean, it would stand a reason, Tony. I mean, that's one of the things that you look at, one of the things that you study. I mean, there's metrics to measure just about everything today, including the portal and portal activity, right? So the closer and more concentric you are to your campus in terms of where the kids come from that you populate your roster with, the but more of a puncher's chance you're going to have at them being closer to family, them being closer to home, them not having a reason to jump on an airplane and fly halfway across the country. And when you look at Fairfield, Ohio, that's obviously the case. I mean, we've had a lot of recruiting history success and historical success there. So when you look at that six-hour radius, stop and consider just how much talent that does include. Well, that, that radius surrounding Morgantown, you're going to talk about talent-rich and fertile areas of Ohio. You're going to talk about, about the better part of Pennsylvania, the Baltimore DMV metro. Uh, you get down into Virginia. I mean, you can even extend to the south, into the Carolinas, depending sure. on where you're going. So there's a lot of talent. And let's get to the brother, Tony, yeah, Josiah Jackson. We talked let's about Jordan Jackson. Let's jump in here now on Josiah Jackson, his twin brother. So we highlighted Jordan and his ability and great speed, his mm -hmm. great field, and you called it spatial vision. Mm -hmm. What is West Virginia getting here in Josiah Jackson? Well, let's start with this. Different circumstances in the sense that we have an early enrollee. So Josiah is a kid who's going to be here on campus here in a couple weeks and take part in spring drill. So that's meaningful as well. He's very long and he's very rangy, Tony. He's comfortable in press coverage. You'll see him defensively consistently break up the football from a man coverage standpoint. He busts up slant routes. He reads them. He busts down and breaks things up. He knows how to use his hands and he knows how to use the boundary as a defender. But again, right here what you're looking at is his playmaking ability. Look at this. Chasing things down, making plays. But when I look at DBs, Tony, one of the things I look at, especially at that corner spot, watch it. Break up on the football here, this physical. And we all know the quick game, those perimeter screens, what a central part of Big 12 offenses they are. So being able to bust those things up. But when he plays near the sideline, one of the things you're going to see is him use the sideline to his advantage. He's very crafty, crafty and athletic, and he has ability to regroup against double moves. Sometimes you'll see him get beat, but he can redirect and reroute, stop and go. He gets his hands on the receiver. He's not afraid, as you saw there, to fly up and support both in run and in the screen game. I thought we got to. I think we got to get Tony. I yes. mean, I, I'm, I'm excited that he's here in the spring. And as you said, yeah, in on the spring, and so he's six feet, 175 pounds. So immediately. He will come in in spring ball and mm -hmm. get some invaluable attention. And that cornerback spot is one really of the two spots that coming in as a true freshman, you have a higher chance mm -hmm. to play. Running back spot and the corner spot mm -hmm. is normally through history has shown us those guys have an easier time to get on the field. All right, let's jump into the quarterback room now. Why not? We've got the signal caller right here. Time to break down one of your guys. And we're talking yep. about Sean Boyle who was an early commit for WVU. He is out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Production, Tony, let's start with that. I mean, one of the things you want to look at at this position is production. He was Conference Player of the Year, Southwestern 4A Conference Player of the Year. That production was there. As you'll see here, he has a very compact delivery. One of the first things you want to look at with a quarterback is, does he have the touch? Does he throw a catchable football? And that's one of the things that jumped out. And you'll see him, he's, he's, a little, he's nimble, he's shifty. He has good pocket awareness, he moves around, and he has strength to buy time. But the interesting thing, Tony, is keeps his eyes downfield as he's doing it. He's not necessarily looking to run as much as he is to extend the play and put the football downfield. He has very solid timing on his throws. Look him in on the move right here. Again, 
rolling to his right, firing downfield, finding his guy, making a play. And he's deceptively athletic, okay? He's sneaky athletic. Kind of kid that can move the sticks with his legs a couple times a game, and that's really what you're looking at. And the other interesting thing is, unlike a lot of quarterbacks in this day and age in this era, he spent a lot of time both under center and in the gun, so that gives you something to work with there as well. 6'2", 200, that's mm -hmm. real good size uh, when you've got the ability to look above that line of scrimmage. He's got the Absolutely. body build that he can uh, potentially grow into. Now let me ask you this deceptively athletic. Did anyone ever use that characterization when you were a player? Uh, I'll put it to you like this. Uh, when Rich Rodriguez would go empty and run the quarterback draw, I got eight yards because I couldn't help it. But I could easily see how Pat White would get 80. I, I saw the lanes there, okay? I'm just not Pat White, all right? I wasn't deceptively anything other than I was definitely deceiving somebody if they thought I was athletic. There's no doubt about that. He's, he's too humble, the former amateur athlete of the year in the state of West Virginia. All right, stay with us. Just getting underway here. Many more to come. We've talked about the Jackson brothers. We've talked about Sean Boyle. You see some other names on there, including a very familiar last name in Noah Braham. We'll talk about those and more coming up. Stay with us. Our special presentation of National Signing Day continues after this from Country Roads Trust. When you're choosing your heart care team, the stakes are high. You want answers and a clear path forward, but mostly you just want your life back. The WVU Heart and Vascular Institute can help. Our cardiologists and heart surgeons are national and international leaders in heart care, solving the most difficult cases at West Virginia's number one ranked hospital and highest rated cardiac program by US News and World Report. Your heart care is a choice. Choose the best. 1-0, drive to left center field, going back, and it's off the scoreboard and gone. You can feel the excitement of West Virginia baseball. It's right around the corner. Join us at Wagner Field at Montague County Ballpark for Big 12 matchups against Kansas, TCU, Oklahoma, and Texas Tech, along with games against rivals Pitt, Penn State, and Marshall. Purchase your season tickets now for as low as $120. Mini packages starting at just $20. Order your tickets today at WVUGame.com. My scholarship is super important to me. My message to donors is thank you so much for everything that you've done. It's been a privilege for me to be here. My dreams would not be a reality without it. There's a lot of pride here. Everywhere you go, everybody loves to rep WVU, and you know not everyone's fortunate enough to uh, be on, on some type of scholarship, and, and they have to worry about student loans. And It's just a burden that I, I don't have to, to deal with, and I'm thankful all the time that I was fortunate enough to receive something like that. I just want to say thank you so much to private donors for funding our scholarships and our facilities because it has given me the opportunity to train here at the highest caliber and I know that's not an opportunity that everyone gets to say they've done. I'm very blessed to say that I'm on scholarship and to the donors I'd like to say thank you for everything that you guys have given us. This has been a dream of mine to come here and to compete at WU and you guys have made it possible for me. You can make a difference by joining Country Roads Trust. Your membership gets you exclusive access to student athletes, signed memorabilia, in-person events, and so much more, while allowing the athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness. Work on me, work on three, one, two, three, one! Becoming a member of the Country Roads Trust ensures that WVU stays on top of the NIL landscape in college athletics. That landscape includes trust athletes out in the community making a difference and representing WVU in a positive manner. The path to success has never been more clear and your support of NIL will help pave the way. Your membership has a direct impact on the lives of WVU student athletes now and in the future. To learn more about how you can support Mountaineer Athletics, go to join.countryroadstrust.com. Hey folks. 
Become our member of Country Roads Trust today. Hey, welcome back, everyone. It is our National Signing Day program. We're with you until 11 a.m. this morning. Coming up in about 20 minutes, we're going to hook up with WVU's Athletic Director, Ren Baker. For many, it'll be the first time uh, to have an opportunity to hear him. And we'll continue to bring this list together. In our uh, first segment, we showed you a corner, we showed you a running back, we showed you a quarterback. Now, let's jump into some legacy guys mm -hmm. here. When it comes to recruiting, some people have to be taught about Mountaineer football and Mountaineer tradition. Uh, the next young man on the list had no choice. He grew up in Mountaineer football mm -hmm. tradition, and we're talking about Noah Braham. He is the son of uh, former WVU standout Hall of Famer Rich Braham, who had more than a decade of experience in the National Football League. And while his dad was a great player, Noah, without any question of a doubt, deserves the recognition that he is getting and the opportunity to play at this level. Sure does. Great player in his own right, Tony. Uh, you'll see here on the tape, he's very athletic and he plays strong. He has good ball skills. That's why they moved him around to try to find creative ways to get him involved. Uh, he has a very high football IQ, whether you see him finding soft spots in coverage or understanding leverage defensively, he seeks out contact. You'll see him break some tackles because of his physicality. You saw a minute ago, he does have that good feel for the soft spot in zone coverage. And whether you play offense or defense, that's going to serve you well because conceptually you understand what teams are trying to accomplish. Now he has good enough feet to block in space. That's obviously going to matter if you're going to task him with being an H-back tight end type. So defensively, smart kid resets to impact the play by batting the football. But I think he's a good football player all around. And I remember, Tony, I was here when Rich came in as a pup as a walk-on, right? And to see uh, just the course and the trajectory of his career, where it started, where it ended. Uh, amazing football family, amazing guy, uh, and you just can't have enough Noah Brahms in your program. You really can't. Yeah, and as you remember, his dad, when he came in from University High School, he had almost no offers mm -hmm. whatsoever, and he came in as a walk-on. I think Virginia Tech showed a little bit of interest mm -hmm. back then. He came in as a tight end, mm -hmm. and he grew himself in to a tackle. Sure did. But what separated Rich, and you would think this will carry over just by the way that you're raised, is that Rich never knew the difference between practice or a game. That's right. His foot was down on the gas pedal yep. at 100 miles per hour, and he became one of the most physical. He really typifies mm -hmm. what West Virginia football has been built on through the uh, years. Absolutely. That blue collar, hard nose, that edge, that mentality. Nowadays, we call them dogs. <laughs> yeah. uh, he was a dog before they used the word dog. And it's good to see uh, someone come into the program because he will have that ability and that mindset mm -hmm. to continue to, uh, to advance. Up. Yeah, Rich arrived with a huge chip on his shoulder. And one of the things that was obvious and apparent with him very, oft, very on was, early on was how assertive he was going to be. I mean, nobody was going to push him around. And that's the type of thing that's going to grab the staff's attention. And that's the type of thing I would expect from Noah Braham, just a kid who appreciates what Mountaineer football is all about, but in the bigger picture, appreciates what college football is all about. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's jump over to the defensive side now. And we will talk about Zachariah Keith. He's a young man from the state of Georgia. Obviously, West Virginia has opportunity presenting itself in that defensive line room. Mm -hmm. What's your takeaway on Zachariah Keith? Uh, Tony, what you're going to get is you're going to get explosiveness off the edge. Uh, that's what's exciting about Zachariah Keith. Again, for a kid that's a senior in high school, he plays with pretty good size and he plays at a high level of football. He plays under control. Uh, he has good bend, good lean, and good pad level. These are all things that you don't expect really to come until later from a technical standpoint when he gets college coaching. But he was well coached at the high school level. He has a big frame and he's a big man. You'll see him here on tape how violent his hands are. As he gets engaged, it's kind of his day and he makes things happen. He chases you down from behind. You see the physicality. Uh, he, he's very assertive, he's very aggressive. Just watch him explode off the football with that first step and what a burst he has. He stands the blocker up, he engages him, and then he reads and reacts and makes the play. But he just so consistently did this. And they'll move him around too. He slides down inside there. He's tenacious. You saw him chase the quarterback down from behind a couple snaps ago. Now one of the things about it, Tony, and this is expected, when 
you see a kid so dominant at the high school level, he got held a lot. He got held a lot. They obviously didn't call it a lot. He still overcame it and found ways to make plays, but he's really raw. Uh, I, I do think he has a chance to develop into something special. These are the types of kids, Tony, that if you're looking for early contributors, okay, that comes in different forms, how do you define that? Okay, do they come in and contribute at their position right away? Potentially, but a lot of these kids, Zachariah Keith included, can also contribute in the transition units. So, sure. I mean, there's different ways for him to pitch in, but I think we got a whale of a football player. Great job by Andrew Jackson going down there and grabbing this kid. You take a look at his offer list, and it was a very select group. We're talking about high-level SEC programs, high-level ACC programs as well. So this is a really, really good get for West Virginia. Body build-wise, as we said, 6'5", 240. What does that become over a period of time? Well, that's the question with so many of these kids. One of the things that I do is I try and project. Once Mike Joseph gets a hold of these kids in that crazy lab he has, what's that start to look like? Because not only will they build weight, but they'll build body mass and muscle mass. That's what's exciting. He's already 240 plus, pushing 250. This kid could easily put on 20, 25 pounds of nothing but muscle. And you saw how twitchy he was for a kid his size already. I think it's exciting in terms of what he can do. And again, credit to the staff. AJ flips him from Georgia Tech because we stayed on a kid like this. So this is a great addition to that room. When you take a look at uh, all of these uh, young guys that will be signing here, uh, today and then going forward, you know, you can take a look at some of the measurables, right? Uh, what's their speed? What's their length? What's their size? What do they show on tape? The one great thing that you never know mm -hmm. is this right, right here. And so for some, they will take advantage of an opportunity that's presented to them, and some won't. Plain and simple. I mean, history shows that no matter where you're looking at. That's the greatest unknown. We can talk Absolutely. about these guys, but what is the mindset once they arrive? Do they have that proverbial chip on their shoulder to show mm -hmm. that they were, you know, perhaps um, under-recruited or undervalued coming in? And you can build a long, long list of great WVU players, great WVU players who were told at some point, mm -hmm. eh, not quite ready for this, and we can I mean, we just mentioned Rich Braham, and then mm -hmm. fill in all of the other blanks from Major Harris to Pat White to Steve Slayton and on and on and Owen Schmidt and on and on we go. So that really is the, the unknown and you just don't know until you don't. time goes by. All right, let's jump in to another legacy player, T.J. Johnson, signing his commitment to attend West Virginia University. Uh, we talked about Noah Braham with the potential to play on the line right next to the tackle. T.J. Johnson is a receiver that's going to start to move in. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's another kid, Tony, that's going to arrive with size. 6'4", 210. You see what a weapon he was for them in the red zone. His ball skills, his frame, his athleticism. Like another guy with spatial awareness. You can see what he can do with the football. He reads his blockers, what he can do with the football in space. You'll see him catch a wheel route, uh, lower his shoulder, bust up the cornerback. I mean, he's dynamic in terms of what he can do with the football. Just imagine that's a critical third and nine catch that he just made right there. That's the type of thing that you need offensively to move the sticks and have an effective championship level offense, which is what, which what we aspire to be. Look at him battle out of the tackles there. You better bring help if you're going to try and bring this kid down. The screen game, you'll see him run right through it like he did there. The running, the cornerback's tackle attempt. He's, it's very hard for a corner to get him to the ground. He has very strong hands. His size and physicality make him a matchup problem, as we talked about, in the red zone. But once again, watch him in space here, what he can do. First thing he does is lower that shoulder. You're not bringing him down on that back end without help. Just a, There's a physical dimension to his game, Tony, and I think there's endless possibilities with a kid with a frame like that in terms of what he can do. Already at 210 pounds, it's hard to tell what Mike Joseph might do with him. Yeah, so that's T.J. Johnson. He is the son of former Mountaineer Tory Johnson. We invite you to stay tuned. Ren Baker, WV's athletic director, coming up in just a little bit. We'll also go over to the Pushkar Center for some assistant coach interviews. Neil Brown still to come as well. Stay with us. More coming your way.
try it first. The Coliseum, where the spirit of 1.8 million West Virginians wills you to victory. And all the people of Morgantown go bananas! I don't think I've ever seen this place as alive as it is tonight. This is as loud a building as we have been in this season. There, there's no place like this. They're going wild here at the Coliseum. Single game tickets are on sale now at WVUGame.com. You can make a difference by joining Country Roads Trust. Your membership gets you exclusive access to student athletes, signed memorabilia, in person events, and so much more, while allowing the athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness. Work on me, work on three. One, two, three. Woo! Becoming a member of the Country Roads Trust ensures that WBU stays on top of the NIL landscape in college athletics. That landscape includes trust athletes out in the community making a difference and representing WBU in a positive manner. The path to success has never been more clear and your support of NIL will help pave the way. Your membership has a direct impact on the lives of WBU student athletes now and in the future. To learn more about how you can support Mountaineer Athletics, go to join.countryroadstrust.com. Hey folks, become a member of Country Roads Trust today. West Virginia University is a place where learning is an adventure, inside and outside. You'll become an innovator, a boundary breaker, an earth shaker. Choose your circle from 30,000 fellow Mountaineers and choose your path from hundreds of majors and minors in a community that feels small. And you'll use this to get to class. You'll have room to find your people, your passions, and your purpose. Because we're a place where everyone fits. This is WVU. This is home. When you're choosing your heart care team, the stakes are high. You want answers and a clear path forward, but mostly you just want your life back. The WVU Heart and Vascular Institute can help. Our cardiologists and heart surgeons are national and international leaders in heart care, solving the most difficult cases at West Virginia's number one ranked hospital and highest rated cardiac program by US News and World Report. Your heart care is a choice. Choose the best. Now's your chance to join the Mountaineers for the 2023 season at Milan Pushkar Stadium. Fires the ball downfield, makes the catch in the end zone. Touchdown, West Virginia! Secure your seats to watch the Mountaineers take on Pitt in the return of the Backyard Brawl, as well as five other marquee home games. Place your new season ticket deposit for just $99 at WVUGame.com. Thanks so much for being with us here as we continue to build on West Virginia's recruiting class. We have chatted about several of the players on that board, and you can see in column number two, three down, it is Ben Cutter, a linebacker from the state of North Carolina. And uh, Jed, he put together massive statistics when it comes to career tackles, over 500 career tackles. Yeah. Always around the football. I mean, Western Foothills Conference Defensive Player of the Year for a reason. What you're going to see here is a football player who reads the play, diagnoses things. He's just around the ball. He's the traditional ball hawk. He's aggressive sideline to sideline as a defender. He's disruptive. You'll see him read and then launch himself into the play. He truly has a nose for the football. You'll see him sift through things and find the football making plays in space. It, it's amazing what he can do. He secures the tackler by squaring his shoulders, delivers violence, great timing on the snap count when, when they did ask him to blitz and play that role. He closes fast from coverage. You see him smother the quarterback when he tries to take off. Look at him reading the screen. He's not buying it for a second. Just a very high football IQ. He diagnoses things quickly. That's what you want to see. Again, Tony, does that look like a kid who doesn't watch his tape? who doesn't live in the film room, as soon as the football is in the quarterback's hands, he knows where the play's going. That's exactly what you want to see out of that position. 
Again, making a play right there, forcing a turnover. This kid is just always around the football. You'll see there's times when the corner will blow a coverage up the sidelines, and he's so tenacious, he'll chase it down 50 yards downfield because he doesn't give up on a play. He's a creature of the box. You see that right there, flies downhill, makes a play against the run with a downhill running game. Look at the timing we talked about. Timing that snap count, fighting through the block, impacting the play, there's the sack. But you talked about it, Tony, 587 career tackles. Now these things get fuzzy at the high school level sometimes in terms of how they account for or don't account for tackles, but it tells you he's always around the football. When I talked to his coach, David Lubowitz, when I heard from him, he talked about the fact they played a multiple front, they focused on gap control, but their big assignment was to make sure that the D-line kept bodies off of Ben Cutter. He's a great kid, he's a leader. He was the first in the weight room, last to leave the locker room, and he's always thinking team first. That's exactly the kind of kid that you want populating your locker room. 6'1", 215 pounds. Mm -hmm. What do you need weight-wise to play in this league? Uh, another kid, Tony, that I think will show up and have an opportunity to contribute on special teams and the transition units and the coverage units and work his way into the linebacker room or linebacker role. He does need to put a few pounds on, but because of his instinctiveness and his ability to read things and diagnose, I think it gives him a puncher's chance up front to maybe steal some snaps in terms of getting on the field sooner than you think he would, but he does need to put some weight on. I'd say another 10 pounds, 12 pounds, even 15. Does he stay straight in the box in his career? Or can... it, it, maybe so, maybe so. Uh, again, a kid that, that has that kind of mindset and that kind of high football IQ and understanding of what's going on, he might end up, let's see, in terms of what his body does shape up to look like, let's see if he turns out to be a Mike Backer. All right, so Ben Cutter, linebacker from Denver, North Carolina. What do you say we jump in here now and take a look at another young man by the last name of Hurd. Jed, you are happy to see this name on the board, James Hurd Jr. I sure am. Good football up there in Camden, New Jersey. This is a kid who is explosive from both a two-point stance and with his hand in the dirt. Dynamic off the edge. Great timing as a blitzer off the edge. He has great bend, another guy that's instinctive, Tony. You'll see him play with good vision. He's strong enough to engage, then shed the offensive tackle as he reads and reacts. Just watch that burst off the edge, chasing things down, impacting the play from the back side there as you see the football flying backwards. But once again, pay attention to the first step. See that first step burst? That's the mark of a good edge rusher, and that's what you're getting in, in James Hurd. And I, I think, Tony, this is a kid that's going to explode into the ball carrier. He understands leverage. He attacks with the correct shoulder. That's not an accident. He gets it from a run fit standpoint. You'll see him set the edge and keep contained. In other words, he's not just playing with reckless abandon and leaning on his skill set and his talent. There's a, an IQ element to his game, and he understands the bigger picture of what they're trying to accomplish defensively, and he never gives up on a play. There's multiple times you'll see him on the ground get off the ground and find his way to make a play but another guy Tony that I talked to his coach Rob Henson up there in uh, uh, in Jersey and this is a guy that spent a couple years as an analyst with Greg Schiano at Rutgers uh, he's very well coached that staff understands the big picture of what to do with these kids. Rob Henson's done a great job. They based out of a 4-2, but they were multiple. And James has his whole toolbox of moves. That's one of the interesting things that Rob Henson pointed out to me, Coach Henson. He said, look, when he attacks an offensive tackle at the high school level, those high school offensive tackles are expecting a very limited repertoire, right? One move. That's not the case. The high school guy's expecting that, but out of James Hurd, you're going to get a bull rush, a speed rush, speed to power. He already is advanced in terms terms of what he brings to the table in that toolkit. So another kid that's very exciting in terms of what he might be able to bring right out of the gate. Yeah, big offer list as well. Miami, Nebraska, Penn State, Tennessee, Texas A&M, Virginia, Virginia Tech, among others. So that's a very big Tony, one pickup. thing. And one thing I'd add, he missed the first four games of the season because of the transfer rules. And what was impressive was he was still the leader of that locker room despite not being able to play that first month of the season. So we won the locker room over. All right, James Hurd Jr. is in. We invite you to stay tuned. When we come back, we'll chat with WVU Athletic Director Ren Baker as he makes his move in on a permanent basis here at West Virginia. We'll be back. can make a difference by joining Country Roads Trust. 
Your membership gets you exclusive access to student athletes, signed memorabilia, in-person events, and so much more, while allowing the athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness. Work on me, work on three, one, two, three, one! Becoming a member of the Country Roads Trust ensures that WVU stays on top of the NIL landscape in college athletics. That landscape includes trust athletes out in the community making a difference and representing WVU in a positive manner. The path to success has never been more clear and your support of NIL will help pave the way. Your membership has a direct impact on the lives of WVU student athletes now and in the future. To learn more about how you can support Mountaineer Athletics, go to join.countryroadstrust.com. Hey folks, become a member of Country Roads Trust today. The air feels different on fall Saturdays in West Virginia. Familiar roads lead us on early morning drives to a place where we feel alive. And traditions bring together a fierce fan base united by the same passion, West Virginia football. As West Virginia's bank, we've been there and we'll continue to be there. United Bank, proud to be united with the Mountaineers. Try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey kids, now's your chance to join the Mountaineer Kids Club. Members receive their very own membership t-shirt with free admission to select WVU sporting events, a personalized happy birthday video message from the WVU Spirit Squad, exclusive shopwvu.com discount codes, and invitations to exclusive events and more. Join now for just $25 and don't miss out on Mountaineer Kids Club fun. Visit wvusports.com slash kids club to sign up today. at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mountaineer Nation, we need you to help us make the Coliseum a very special place this season. Your dedication to the gold and blue will fuel us. It will provide passion, energy, and a competitive drive to our student athletes. So get your tickets now. Then go recruit your friends and neighbors and let's make some noise. Let's go! Single game tickets are available now at WVUGame.com. We welcome you back, everyone. Our National Signing Day program continues, presented by the Country Roads Trust. You see the list continues to grow. We're up to 11 future Mountaineers, and we'll continue breaking those down and showing you highlights of each of those young men as the list continues to grow. Uh, coming out of that last commercial break, you saw WV women's basketball coach Dom Plitzewhite. WV women will be in action later on today taking on Miami of Ohio. Yesterday, West Virginia down in West Palm rallied from 16 down, beat the University of Georgia in a great, great win for Coach P, which means that our current incoming athletic director is now undefeated <laughs> as an AD. He's 2-0, and oh, and Ren Baker now joins us from over at the Pushkar Center, and delighted to have him. Ren, you're undefeated as an AD. I think this is exactly the start that you wanted to have. Uh, Tony, uh, Jed probably knows this, but you, you know, you, when an AD's undefeated, it's like when a pitcher has a no-hitter. You're not, you're not <laughs> supposed to jinx me like that. <laughs> okay, that's fine. All right. So all Ren does is guarantee undefeated seasons from here on in. Hey, it's good to have you here with us, and welcome on board. I know that this is the first official week 
um, that you have been into the office and things are going to start to get busy real quick. First off, you attended your first WVU basketball game back on Sunday. You saw West Virginia get the victory over the University of Buffalo. So just first off, thoughts on seeing a game inside the Coliseum and your takeaway from what you saw. Well, I, I'm a huge college hoops fan. You and I talked about, uh, you know, that's where I got started in college athletics. So uh, definitely uh, have watched a lot of uh, West Virginia games on TV over the years. My first time uh, in the Coliseum, and, and I thought it was great. And, you know, students had already left for the most part, so that we didn't have near the student crowd that we normally have. So I can't wait till they get here and uh, get to see the full, uh, full experience. But um, I, I enjoyed it, had a great time, met a lot of people. And um, it, was a, it was a terrific way to start my time here at WVU. Hey, let's jump in now, Ren, that you are in the office. And you have put together a 100-day plan uh, to get things moving forward. Can you break that down for us a little bit? First off, your philosophy on initiating a 100-day plan, and what are the overview thoughts that you want to accomplish here really in the first three-plus months? Yeah, I think the 100-day plan really kind of just keeps you on task. It's easy to get lost as you onboard somewhere. You're trying to learn so much and trying to trying to do so much. And so, you know, it's starting with meetings with our senior leadership team and our head coaches and, and asking them to complete a SWAT and just help me as I onboard here understand, you know, what our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, and our threats are for, for each program and then each area of the department. Um, and that'll be the, the, the beginning stages of starting to try to put together a, a list of strategic initiatives, a, a strategic plan, so to speak, later on. Um, and so I think that part of it is, is really important. So this week, focusing on the senior staff and then having a lot of meetings with, with our football programs to, to get some early understanding of what I can do to be of assistance to them. Um, so it, it's a really important part. When I come back uh, after the holidays, I'll, I'll go spend a few uh, days with the family uh, in Texas for Christmas, and uh, they have not transitioned yet. Sometime this spring they'll be coming. But uh, then when I come back, it'll – It'll really be diving into all of the sport programs um, and just listening and, and learning from each of our coaches to understand what are the immediate short-term things that I can help with and long-term what needs to be uh, on, on the radar screen. And then, you know, you have all your constituencies on, ca on campus, the various vice presidents whose areas we intersect with and we need to be successful. And then getting out in this community and across the state. Um, so one thing here that I think is really important is in my first few months on the job, I want to try and get all over the state. I'd like to visit every county. And so uh, that's not something that was necessarily needed when I went to North Texas. Most of our uh, fan base is right there pretty close, but it's something that I feel strongly about for me to be as effective as, as I need to be and I want to be here. I, I need to learn uh, about all the parts of, of West Virginia, all, all of our uh, fans across the state. Well, if you weren't busy here in a couple hours, I'd say hop in the car and start with Tucker County <laughs> when I head home. But uh, before I get into my question, I was hoping to ask, you attended the game on Sunday. Are you ready to guarantee Mountaineer fans there's going to be a Hall of Fame celebration at every activity that you offend, <laughs> attend? Well, that, that would be pretty good, wouldn't it? I'm sure uh, we, we'll start with uh, putting Tony in the Hall of Fame. If, there you go. You're there you go. That, we'll, I'm good. We'll there you go. One at a time here. So what I wanted to ask you, okay, when you look at the landscape of college football, okay, I, this is going to turn into a simple question, but we have to arrive at that, okay? As I view it, there's college football 1.0 and there's college football 2.0. College football 1.0 went from 1869, starting with Rutgers Princeton, up to 2020. College football 2.0 really started in April of 2021. The transfer portal started in 2018, but it was just a way to compartmentalize and track transfers until the one-time transfer rule was applied in April of 21. Three months later, here comes name, image, likeness. College football 2.0 is born, a completely different species in large measure from what 1.0 was like. We know what West Virginia's track record was like in terms of success in college football 1.0 developing kids for three to five years, overachieving, developing far more than our share of NFL players, 12 first round draft picks, winning big bowl games, winning league championships. What is our path to success in college football 2.0 when things like the portal have been a dagger right to the heart, not just to everybody, but particularly to those programs that have a history of overachieving in terms of talent development like West Virginia? Yeah, you know, I. 
I have mixed feelings just on the portal and, and the way it's set up uh, in general. Um, I, I, you know, I support student athletes' rights to be able to, to make a choice to find a program that fits them better. But I think what's been great about college athletics, um, and it, it's not just me saying this, um, mm. I've talked to CEOs and, and heads of uh, talent re recruitment at companies all over the country that'll say, hey, we like to hire college athletes. They know how to take constructive criticism. They've worked in a team environment. They know how to balance personal goals and team goals. They know how to fight through adversity. Um, and I worry that we're losing some of that. Forget everything else. Um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I think most of us got into this because we care about helping young people grow and develop. And, um, you know, all of us, uh, you know, if we could just instantly put ourselves on the open market, know we'd have multiple offers for a job. Um, I'm not sure some of us would fight through those situations that really help form us and make us better. Um, but specific to, to, to West Virginia, I think it starts with telling our story about all the things that we're doing to prepare student athletes for life. So, you know, the best best way to, to fill a roster is to try to retain talented players who are contributing. And the best way to do that is for them to feel like you value them uh, as people, that you're helping them grow, you're helping them get prepared for, the, for life after football. At some point, uh, they take the, the ball away from all of us. Um, and uh, you, you, we can't, you know, it's not just doing those things because I think we do those things pretty well. It's being able to tell that story and why we do it better than our competitors. Uh, and that's going to be a, a key part uh, to retain the students that we have. Um, and then, you know, inside uh, the portal or, or just recruiting uh, high school students like we're signing today, I think it's important to double down on the opportunities that are here uh, at an institution that, that carries um, – you know, the entire state and, and really much of the region. We have, even though we're not a, a highly populated state, um, all over this state, our, our student athletes are superstars. And so when you start to talk about things like name, image, and likeness opportunities, building a brand, those kind of things, I think it should be an advantage for us. And uh, we've got to treat it that way. Um, we've got to embrace it. Um, you, you know, I've, I've reached out uh, and, and built relationships with Country Roads Trust, knowing that um, that's a collective that, that specifically supports NIL opportunities. I, I, I love people that decide to do it on their own as well. Uh, but, but those are things we're going to have to accentuate and highlight if we're, we're going to continue to be successful. Ren, let me ask you this. Uh, last week, the NCAA made the announcement that the outgoing governor of Massachusetts, Charlie Baker, would be taking over as the new head of the NCAA, an out-of-the-box selection. First off, your thoughts, and secondly, what does that mean going forward as to why that decision was made? Yeah, I think the first thing is I was shocked to know that Massachusetts had a Republican governor. <laughs> that was the first thing. I didn't realize that. Uh, so when I first read that, I was like, wow, I had no idea. But uh, no, I've heard great things about him. Um, I think it's an indication of where we're at right now um, in, in college athletics. Um, you know, it was more important to have somebody who understands the legal system, who understands how to run a campaign and, and how, to, uh, how to present a case in public um, than it was to have a practitioner who's been on the ground day to day as a president or AD or, or something like that. And so um, I'm excited about it. Um, you know, they say madness is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And so I, I would have been disappointed for, for, for the NCAA to hire just uh, the same old path that they've always hired. And so um, can, can uh, Governor Baker, who uh, uh, is no relation, but can he, uh, can, he, can he do the things we need him to do? That remains to be seen. But is this a different uh, is this a different resume and different career path than the NCAA has typically had sitting in that chair? It definitely is, and um, we need to try something different. So I, I'm excited that you know he has a reputation for being able to uh, work with uh, politicians on both sides of the aisle, and um, I, I think that'll serve him well uh, in this position. So let's follow up on that point. You said the things that we need to do. Obviously, the NCAA going to lawmakers and asking for federal legislation has been on the front burner. Realistically, do you see that happening? Can that happen? Well, I, you know, I, I hope that we can work through. I don't think it'll 
it'll be a perfect situation. Uh, but I, I hope that uh, I think there's enough interest. Uh, you know, Senator Manchin obviously is, is this has been forefront of his mind. I've already been able to have a short short conversation with him, and we're going to follow up after the new year uh, about a variety of things, not not just this topic. But um, you know, I know Senator Tuberville, Senator Book. Well, hmm, may, may have lost our video feed there in mid-sentence. Sorry about that. So to the point that Ren was making, mm -hmm. um, this is certainly a step into a different direction uh, with a politician taking over makes that sense. position. But it does make sense yep. because as we've been saying, okay, we heard that the buzzword is guardrails. What are the guardrails? We've got to create guardrails yep. so there can be some form of competitive balance. And many do believe, like Red, Ren was addressing there, that we're going to have to get some type of federal legislation so that, no pun intended, everyone is playing uh, by yeah. the same rules. And so we'll figure that all out. Sorry about that. We'll uh, spend some more time with Ren coming up. We invite you to stay tuned. We'll continue to count down the list of our signees and have more coming your way as our special presentation. National Signing Day continues. When you're choosing your heart care team, the stakes are high. You want answers and a clear path forward, but mostly you just want your life back. The WVU Heart and Vascular Institute can help. Our cardiologists and heart surgeons are national and international leaders in heart care, solving the most difficult cases at West Virginia's number one ranked hospital and highest rated cardiac program by US News and World Report. Your heart care is a choice. Choose the best. 1-0, drive to left center field, going back, and it's off the scoreboard and gone. You can feel the excitement of West Virginia baseball. It's right around the corner. Join us at Wagner Field at Montague County Ballpark for Big 12 matchups against Kansas, TCU, Oklahoma, and Texas Tech, along with games against rivals Pitt, Penn State, and Marshall. Purchase your season tickets now for as low as $120. Mini packages starting at just $20. Order your tickets today at WVUGame.com. My scholarship is super important to me. My message to donors is thank you so much for everything that you've done. It's been a privilege for me to be here. My dreams would not be a reality without it. There's a lot of pride here. Everywhere you go, everybody loves to rep WVU and you know, not everyone's fortunate enough to uh, be on, on some type of scholarship and, and they have to worry about student loans. And it's just a burden that I, I don't have to, to deal with and I'm thankful all the time that I, I was fortunate enough to receive something like that. I just want to say thank you so much to private donors for funding our scholarships and our facilities because it has given me the opportunity to train here at the highest caliber and I know that's not an opportunity that everyone gets to say they've done. I'm very blessed to say that I'm on scholarship and to the donors I'd like to say thank you for everything that you guys have given us. This has been a dream of mine to come here and to compete at WU and you guys have made it possible for me. Can make a difference by joining Country Roads Trust. Your membership gets you exclusive access to student athletes, signed memorabilia, in person events, and so much more, while allowing the athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness. Work on me, work on three. One, two, three. Woo! Becoming a member of the Country Roads Trust ensures that WBU stays on top of the NIO landscape in college athletics. That landscape includes trust athletes out in the community making a difference and representing WVU in a positive manner. The path to success has never been more clear and your support of NIL will help pave the way. Your membership has a direct impact on the lives of WVU student athletes now and in the future. To learn more about how you can support Mountaineer Athletics, go to join.countryroadstrust.com. Hey folks. Become our member of Country Roads Trust today.
NSD 2022 continues. Tony Caridi along with Jed Drenning. Sorry that we lost Ren Baker, but we've got Ren back. And Ren, apologize about that. Let's pick up on your thought in regard to uh, governmental intervention, I guess we could say, or new federal laws that could try to put some parameters in on the movement going forward. And you said, obviously, that you've already spoken with Senator Manchin. It seems as though that's the growing move, that something is going to happen, but it remains to be seen how much can be done. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, we'll, we'll see where it lands. I mean, there are certainly, just like most issues, there are people who uh, feel very strong on, on this side about some issues and, and on the other side. Um, so it's really finding that common ground. Uh, and, and I think there is a path there where we can protect the things that are important to all of us who love college athletics, still give the student athletes um, more rights, more benefits, um, but preserve uh, intercollegiate athletics and, and preserve it being a part of the academic model. And so um, that's the goal. And I do believe there's a path in there that, that will satisfy both, both of those. Ren, let's talk schedules. Uh, obviously, a year ago, this is a different climate than it was a year ago, but a year ago, the Big 12 schedule was released on December 1st. This year, it was anticipated December 15th, but it's been bumped again. There's a lot of moving parts here. Now, as I understand it, one of the latest moving parts is the consideration of possibly if Texas and Oklahoma do leave early before 2025, there may be concessions made on their part in terms of scheduling. So what would then be non-league games once they're in the SEC with Big 12 members? Is that part of what's holding the schedule up or what's at play there do you know? Um, you know, I probably can't say a whole lot there. And part of that is I don't know a whole lot. Uh, Rob Alsop actually attended those Big 12 meetings. He gave me a, a brief uh, afterwards, but um, I do think there's some conversations on when is the time for them to exit and what would they be willing to do uh, on those things. But, um, you know, I, I think we just have to hold tight and, and see where that uh, lands. Um, right now, we're prepared for them to be uh, in the in the league, um, you know, and, and I, that would be great if they are. Um, if, if something else has worked out, uh, we'll adjust and pivot and do that, too. So, um you know, I, I'm not I'm not as knowledgeable as I'd probably like to be on where we're at in that process. I did have a chance to do a Zoom with Commissioner Yormark last week, and we talked about a lot of things, but didn't spend a whole lot of time on that topic. Sure. Hey, Ren, we're going to let you go. We do appreciate your time. One last question for you, real quick. Uh, I see your uh, I see your donning a very nice pullover today. Obviously, when you go into the office, you get a massive selection. You just say, "Here it all is." How did the gear haul go for you? Did it meet thumbs up approval? Oh, it definitely did. Um, and I told our equipment guys first day, I said, listen, I'm not high maintenance on anything else, but I am high maintenance on gear. And I admit that and, and, I, and I apologize none for it. So I've got all kinds of, uh, of gear uh, in my office. And so it looks like a, like a closet threw up in there almost because uh, I don't have a house here yet. I'm at the uh, uh, Marriott. So um, I'm keeping a lot of stuff in the office, but uh, I will be able to w probably go a month or so here without wearing the same, yeah. same, same thing twice. So exactly. Good gear selection. All right, very good. Thanks so much for your time. We appreciate Glad it. Glad to have you, Ren. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. There he is, Ren Baker, West Virginia Athletic Director. All right, let's jump back in to our signing list, and we've got a very familiar last name here in Josiah Trotter. You just say the last name, Trotter, and if you're a football fan, you go like, wait a second really good player yes he is a son of a standout football player sure and is. it looks as though West Virginia's got themselves a really special guy here a uh, heck of a guy pedigree is there Tony obviously his dad played uh, for the Eagles for a long time standout linebacker for the Eagles his brother is starting with Mike linebacker for the Clemson Tigers and you can see the skill set on display here he's a classic ball hawk another guy that finds himself around the football consistently all the time his physicality stands out sideline to sideline as a defender here's the thing Tony he plays excited and he plays with energy and that's exactly the type of thing that you want out of your defenders he has great vision so he's able to see through the chaos and the mess to find the football from a blitzing standpoint he kind of comes in fast he comes in under control whether that's off the edge whether that's through a gap he finds a way to impact the play he's a smart kid who will let's say get his hands up if he's not going to get home on a sack he quickly ids route combinations and coverage as you'll see him drop here he recognizes what's at play actually he penetrates and pressures the quarterback there and that's one of the assets you're going to see out of this guy but this is the type of guy that you throw him in the box and he's going to make things happen he's going to create matchup problems he's going to get by offensive linemen he's going to diagnose blocking combinations 
very violent hands. He explodes into blockers with leverage and then sheds those blockers. This is a true get. And another guy that's pushing through 30s, he steps on campus at six foot two, Tony. So what can Mike Joseph do with him? But not just from a transition standpoint, but also from a transition team standpoint, special teams, but also I think this kid could steal some snaps in that linebacker room and get on the field as a true defender for West Virginia, even if it's maybe uh, from a specialty standpoint. Yeah, and that size of 230 mm -hmm. pounds coming out of high school is uh, is extraordinary. All right, let's jump in um, to York, Pennsylvania, William Penn High School product, Jaheem White. He is a running back, 5'9", 190 pounds, and uh, here is a young guy that a lot of people have been talking about within this Mountaineer program. Yeah, sure is, Tony. Here's what's interesting about Jaheem White, and here's what you're going to see. He's twitchy. When you look at his size, 5'9", 180, he's a twitchy kid. But normally with twitchy kids, you have some wasted motion as they try and find space. That's not the case with Jaheim White. Very little wasted motion. He has a north-south nature to him. Good balance. You'll see him here gliding in the open field. He sees the field really well. Watch him find daylight. See, he springs into it, busts into the second level. He has a knack for escaping from the pack and exploding downfield. You're going to see some of that. Very soft hands, he's an asset in the pass game. And when he is asked to block and pass pro, Tony, he's scrappy and he finds a way to get it done. Has a nasty streak as a blocker in the run game. But here, from a comp standpoint, this isn't a true comparison, I'm just saying what I see from a skill set standpoint. Here's a kid in Steve Slayton, Tony. When Steve Slayton arrived from, from Conwell Egan High School, he was 5'10", 184. This is the same style of runner. In other words, Steve was twitchy, but he was also north-south. And it almost looked like once he busted to the second level, he wasn't running the football to the back though, but he was returning a kickoff with that stride that he took. That's what I see in Jaheim White. He's an incredible kid. He's an incredible player. I had the good fortune of talking to his coach, Russ Stoner. Uh, great program that Coach Stoner runs up there at York High School. Uh, Coach Stoner loves our staff, loves Neil Brown, loves Chad Scott, talked about what a great job they did in the recruiting process, talked about Jaheim's balance. He said his balance is crazy, and one of the things that people tend to underestimate with him is his lower body strength. His jumping ability is just off the board and ridiculous, but I think we got a really good player. Now again, from an early on the field standpoint, you're stepping into a room that's deep. From a skill set standpoint, is Jaheim White another kid that can find his way onto the field early in the transition units? Right. That's one of the first things you're looking for, and there's a possibility for that. All right, so there is the running back, and to have a good, successful running game, you need to have an offensive lineman in front of the running back to break some holes open. And let's bring up the next guy, and this is a big, long guy, and 6'6", 295 pound, Nick Cray, an offensive lineman from Harbor Creek High School, Erie. Pennsylvania, where through the years West Virginia has had some success. The, the mm -hmm. Bauman brothers, uh, yeah. right, uh, came from Erie PA among others, and uh, Nick Cray, what great size. There's that uh, six hour radius we talked about, Tony, within Morgantown. But, Tony, I, first 60 seconds of tape on this kid, okay, I had half a page of notes. I mean, he is an exciting football player to watch at the point of attack. He's a physical road grader. You'll see him demonstrate great pad level. He quickly out leverages defenders, puts them on skates, and they're out of the play. He's an athletic big man. He's nimble enough to target very well in open space once he hits the second level, and that's going to be an asset on those perimeter screens. And when we ask him to pull, redirects on the move as a puller. You'll see him have great body awareness and great body control. There's times he drives a DB 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage on a power play. It's, it's amazing to watch this kid just uh, finishes strong. He loves to cap off blocks with a big exclamation point. Gets him to the ground and then piles on him. They're not making a play once he gets him down. It's been a long time, Tony, since I've seen a tape with this many defenders on the ground. From a pass pro standpoint, he's more of a technician that you'd expect. Of course, he can be a little raw there, but uh, I'm really excited about this kid. Another kid that might need a year in the system, but he's one of You'll see a handful of offensive linemen we're going to talk about, or I anticipate to talk about, that Nick Cray is a, is a football player. I mean, I, 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 these are just part of the notes that I got. I mean, he was fun to watch and fun to analyze. Yeah, offer list uh, included uh, Pitt and Maryland, Air Force, Boston College, among others. Um, and also, you know, with the way that the weather turns in the Big 12 Conference, and here in Morgantown, for that matter, late in the season, you always take a guy from Erie, Pennsylvania. Yeah. 
They laugh at snow. They laugh at snow. All right, when we come back, we'll head over to the Push Car Center. Mountaineer assistant Jeff Kuntz will join us. We'll get his take on this class and a whole lot more. Stay with us along with Jed Drenning. I'm Tony Caridi, and this is our National Signing Day program brought to us by the Country Roads Trust. Try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Coliseum, where the spirit of 1.8 million West Virginians wills you to victory. And all the people of Morgantown go bananas! I don't think I've ever seen this place as alive as it is tonight. This is as loud a building as we have been in this season. There, there's no place like it. They're going wild here at the Coliseum. Single game tickets are on sale now at WVUGame.com. You can make a difference by joining Country Roads Trust. Your membership gets you exclusive access to student athletes, signed memorabilia, in-person events, and so much more, while allowing the athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness. Work on me, work on three, one, two, three, one! Becoming a member of the Country Roads Trust ensures that WVU stays on top of the NIO landscape in college athletics. That landscape includes trust athletes out in the community making a difference and representing WVU in a positive manner. The path to success has never been more clear and your support of NIO will help pave the way. Your membership has a direct impact on the lives of WVU student athletes now and in the future. To learn more about how you can support Mountaineer Athletics, go to join.countryroadstrust.com. Hey folks. Become a member of Country Roads Trust today. West Virginia University is a place where learning is an adventure, inside and outside. You'll become an innovator, a boundary breaker, an earth shaker. Choose your circle from 30,000 fellow mountaineers and choose your path from hundreds of majors and minors in a community that feels small and you'll use this to get to class. You'll have room to find your people, your passions, and your purpose. Because we're a place where everyone fits. This is WVU. This is home. When you're choosing your heart care team, the stakes are high. You want answers and a clear path forward. But mostly, you just want your life back. The WVU Heart and Vascular Institute can help. Our cardiologists and heart surgeons are national and international leaders in heart care, solving the most difficult cases at West Virginia's number one ranked hospital and highest rated cardiac program by U.S. News and World Report. Your heart care is a choice. Choose the best. Now's your chance to join the Mountaineers for the 2023 season at Milan Pushkar Stadium. Fires the ball. Downfield. Makes the catch in the end zone. Touchdown, West Virginia. Secure your seats to watch the Mountaineers take on Pitt in the return of the Backyard Brawl, as well as five other marquee home games. Place your new season ticket deposit for just $99 at WVUGame.com. Updating our big board, the most recent additions, you see Josiah Trotter and Orion Fisher, defensive end, are, will uh, be next up on the list. We'll talk about uh, Orion coming up in just a little bit as West Virginia continues to add. We are into our second hour here of our National Signing Day program brought to us by the Country Roads Trust. We welcome you back in. Let's head over to the Push Car Center once again. And we are now joined by WV linebackers coach, special teams coordinator, Jeff Kuntz. It's always a huge day for coaches when they finally see their work pay off. And for some cases, 
it's months, in some cases it's, 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 it's years uh, that they have been looking at potential prospects and they finally signed him. Jeff, thanks so much for being with us. I guess we could say happy signing day to you. What's your overall take um, as you guys start to put this list together? What was the intent and what have you guys been able to accomplish to this point? Well, I understand that we have got an issue there. I told Jen before, or Jed before we uh, started the program today, Jed, are you sure you paid the Zoom bill to get the premium service? And Jed said, yeah, I had it taken care of. Now, I, I'm not much of a lip reader, but I thought he said breaking news. <laughs> did, did Coach hey, Jeff say breaking news? I don't think he said breaking <laughs> news. But uh, let, hey, let's jump in here. I mentioned um, yeah. when we came back out, the uh, signing of West Virginia's most recent group, and that's Orion Fisher yep. as a, on the defensive side. You have looked at him. Let's take a look at his highlights yep. a little bit. Yeah, let's take a look at him, Tony. This is dipping down into a great crossing high school in Kentucky. What you're getting here, uh, again, a kid with a lot of size. He pushes six foot six, but he's only 205 pounds. So you anticipate him adding some bulk to that tremendous frame as, re as well. He's, he's incredibly talented, but he's also incredibly raw. He's lean, but he did play with his hands in the dirt as well from a stand-up position, so he's not afraid to get in there after it despite that lean build. He's very long and he presents considerable danger. He has a considerable danger radius, I should say, to quarterbacks. 81-inch wingspan. So just imagine if you can add 15, 20, 25 pounds for that wingspan. He's tenacious, you'll see here on tape, he keeps fighting. He chases the quarterback down outside the pocket. It's almost like trying to escape from a praying mantis when you're trying to get away from this kid with that wingspan and that reach that he has. Now, not a tremendously deep bag of clubs with his pass rushing techniques, but as the techniques expand once he gets to the college level with some coaching, that'll add another dimension to his game. But Tony, it's tremendously exciting to imagine what some time with Mike Joseph, what some time with Neil Brown staff are going to translate into for a kid like Orion Fisher because the things that he does have are things that you can't coach. I mean, there's a physicality, there's a burst, there's a football IQ, there's an instinctive nature to his game, but that big frame has endless possibilities. Yeah. You know, when you see someone that size on the defensive side of the ball, uh, uh, I just I had a Ronaldo Turnbull flashback. I mean, just go. in his stance, yeah. you look at it, you don't see guys that big. All right, let's try again over at the Push Car Center with Jeff Koontz. Jeff, apologize about that, if you would. Uh, pick up where you were there. Just your overall thought as what you guys have put together in this class. I'm really excited about today. Excited about the, the culmination of the last year and a half. You know, we... You know, you kind of asked before the question before we got cut off there, you know, what are we looking for and kind of what was the aim and the goal? And it's like everything else we want to do. It's um, trying to fulfill the needs that we have and going through and, and getting the characteristics that we need for each player. And, you know, leadership character wise, um, work ethic, and all the non-negotiables we talk about at every position group and, and what we have to have to improve in the stat classes and to build. And, um, you know, if we can do that and finish the day today and feel like we made a positive step in that direction, then it's all been worth it. Let's talk about these couple kids to start with, Coach. Obviously, you have to be excited about Trotter, right? Let's talk oh, about yeah. Jeremiah Trotter and what that's going to mean for this program. I mean, the pedigree's there, the skill set's there, the things you see on tape. It's just, boy, are you going to be a blessed coach to be coaching a kid like that. Well, Jed, now you got it. You just did it. And a lot of people are going to do it for a long time. It's not Jeremiah. It's Josiah. It's the younger one. And just uh, did it. I just you know, did it. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, Josiah brings this mentality to him. And, you know, with his dad and his older brother and it's a football family. And when you watch him, it just stands out right now how much he is just um, obsessed with the game of football how much he loves to train. Uh, if I could tell you once, I could tell you a hundred times how many times I talked to him late at night, 10 o'clock at night, and he's working out in his weight room and in, in his house there. And, and uh, when you watch the game, you just see how much film he watches and the preparation that he puts into it because he anticipates, he diagnoses, and then just the physical attributes that he has with his explosiveness, which is a non-negotiable for the position. And when you see him attack the football, when he strikes people, they move backwards. Uh, obviously, he's blessed with a, with a size that you want at the position, but um, his mentality. And, and I had the luxury of seeing Josiah play live uh, three times this year. And uh, 
you know, he is all business. He's a leader. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys that when you usually go to a game, you know, guys, they, they cut their eyes at you. They see you. They notice you. He was dialed in. He was straight ahead. You know, he had a mission. He had a purpose. And you could see that uh, come when the lights turned on because he was uh, violent. He was downhill. And he's exactly what you're looking for at the position. So I'm excited to have someone uh, as ex experienced as he is, the amount of football. He's played on a high stage, played on a nationally televised game this year on ESPN down in Florida, in Quainus, uh, and then ran the table after that game and was able to win a state champion game. And uh, was impressive. I think he had 13 tackles in the first half of that alone. And, um, you know, so you got somebody that knows how to win, won multiple state championships in high school as well. So um, the guy's coming, knows how to work, knows how to win, and knows how to lead. So couldn't be more excited about him. Let's talk Ben Cutter, uh, and I'll tell you what, as we're talking Ben Cutter, let's also talk some special teams. Ben Cutter's a guy who can provide help in a lot of ways, but as a special teams coach, that's something that doesn't get the glory that some of these position coaches might be talking about on a day like uh, National Signing Day, the role that some of these guys might play in the transition units, right? Yeah, no, there's no doubt. I mean, at, at the end of the day, when you play linebacker in college football, you're going to play on special teams. I mean, you are. You're big. You're fast. You can finish plays. You're athletic enough to block. You're athletic enough to make tackles in space. And that's what we got to have. And uh, both these guys have those attributes. Both these guys played on special teams. Josiah ran down on kickoff uh, most of the year. Ben was their punter, uh, faked several punts this year, uh, was able to do that, and was also key in their coverage units as well. Uh, so I'm excited to get get these guys along with other members of our signing class and, and get our hands on them as special teams coaches uh, because that's going to be something that, that we always are trying to build depth on. Uh, going into Ben specifically right now, very, very similar. Uh, going through this process, you know, very first day of spring football, I uh, was down there to watch him uh, and evaluate him live, uh, going through drills, doing that. And as soon as we got off the field, he checked every box for us. And uh, very shortly after, he got the offer from us, and then uh, the process started. Uh, and he had been up here, I think, four or five times uh, over the last year and a half. And, and with both these guys, just uh, fun to go through the entire process with them. Uh, came up here this summer with, with his mom and his sister and uh, had a great official visit. And then this fall, getting to go down there uh, and watch him live, watch him compete. Also, another undefeated uh, state championship football team. And to see him and how aggressive he is, how well he diagnoses, and again, another another guy that's just obsessed with football, obsessed with the game, um, can't get enough of the preparation part of it, loves the weight room, loves to train, and, and is really just a draw with the process. So uh, he's a guy that when you talk um, and getting to talk about football, getting to talk about future opponents constantly, I mean, he's a guy that just, you can tell, he saw things, he saw uh, offensive tendencies really naturally for a young guy. And he's going to have an opportunity to come in here and contribute both at linebacker and on special teams and, and come in here early uh, along with Josiah and really um, stake a claim to, to playing time and, and uh, to contribute to this. So we um, couldn't be more excited to have both these guys. And Ben is a, is a really um, you know, big part of what we're trying to do here. Jeff, you mentioned that both of these young men we're talking about are going to come in early. And so that'll happen literally in a matter of weeks, right? This Christmas break goes by very, very yeah. quickly. What is a realistic expectation once they get into the weight room? Where do you want them body-wise by the time spring ball starts and then by the time camp starts in August? What's realistic in their evolution? Yeah, you know, the thing about these two guys that you are excited about is you got one that's in the low 220s and Cutter right now. You got uh, Josiah that's in the upper 220s, almost 230. And both of them physically right now can play the college game. They're, they have that size right now. Now it's a matter of them getting in with Coach Joseph and his staff, learning how do we work, learning how we train, and the expectations within our program, our culture, and then just improving their flexibility, improving uh, their bend and things like that uh, to allow them to play consistently uh, with the techniques that we need them to play with uh, within our program. So I think these guys are going to come in. Uh, they're guys that have been chomping at the bit, waiting for signing day to get here, not just so they could sign and be done with it, but so that they can get playbook, they can get drill work, they can get those things uh, that we're allowed to get them so that when they get here uh, the second week of January, they can get rolling. Um, ben just finished playing uh, in his uh, all-star game, the North Carolina versus South Carolina Shrine game. Josiah is going to be down in San Antonio playing in the U.S. Uh, All-American uh, All game. Uh, the Adidas game. So as soon as he gets done, they'll both be here. And then um, they're going to be competing. Uh, they're going to. Well, may have 
lost. Maybe Jeff. so. That's the final word. But uh, it is good to have both those guys yeah. coming in early, and uh, they get the opportunity, which, you know, years ago before early signing became relatively normal, um, you would have one chance to get freshmen in here in August, and it was way too late to get them physically ready, mentally ready to play. But you bring them in here in January, and, you know, you think about it. You've got eight full months to mm -hmm. prepare and then get going. It's almost like you're stealing an extra year uh, of, sure. of preparation. All right, Jeff Koontz, thanks very, very much for joining us. We invite you to stay tuned. West Virginia's list continues to grow. We'll continue to recap. Still to come, head coach Neil Brown and more. Stay with us. More coming up. You can make a difference by joining Country Roads Trust. Your membership gets you exclusive access to student athletes, signed memorabilia, in-person events, and so much more, while allowing the athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness. Work on me, work on three, one, two, three, work! Becoming a member of the Country Roads Trust ensures that WBU stays on top of the NIL landscape in college athletics. That landscape includes trust athletes out in the community making a difference and representing WVU in a positive manner. The path to success has never been more clear and your support of NIL will help pave the way. Your membership has a direct impact on the lives of WVU student athletes now and in the future. To learn more about how you can support Mountaineer Athletics, go to join.countryroadstrust.com. Hey folks. Become a member of Country Roads Trust today. The air feels different on fall Saturdays in West Virginia. Familiar roads lead us on early morning drives to a place where we feel alive. And traditions bring together a fierce fan base united by the same passion. West Virginia football. As West Virginia's bank, we've been there and we'll continue to be there. United Bank, proud to be united with the Mountaineers. I need to try it first. Hey kids, now's your chance to join the Mountaineer Kids Club. Members receive their very own membership t-shirt, free admission to select WVU sporting events, a personalized happy birthday video message from the WVU Spirit Squad, exclusive shopwvu.com discount codes, and invitations to exclusive events and more. Join now for just $25 and don't miss out on Mountaineer Kids Club fun. Visit wvusports.com slash kids club to sign up today. at first. Mountaineer Nation, we need you to help us make the Coliseum a very special place this season. Your dedication to the gold and blue will fuel us. It will provide passion, energy, and a competitive drive to our student athletes. So get your tickets now. Then go recruit your friends and neighbors and let's make some noise. Let's go! Single game tickets are available now at WVUGame.com. Our National Signing Day program continues, brought to us by the Country Roads Trust. That, to this moment, is West Virginia's official list. Thirteen players are on the board. 
And we want to spend some time now talking about Cooper Young, six feet, five inches tall, comes from the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, we mentioned six feet five. You've got some size on this board. When you take a look at uh, guys that have signed, we spent some time talking about Nick Cray, who's at six feet, six inches tall. Uh, Zachariah Keith is six five. Cooper Young comes in at six five, 305 pounds. Yeah, Tony, uh, played tackle uh, at the high school level. We'll see if he translates to something on the interior because he has a skill set that might, in fact, do that. He, good pad level. He was an incredibly strong kid. I mean, think about these big defensive tackles that you have to move. You have to be a man mover in this league to get any kind of movement and run the football or protect the passer. Now, good bend. He can anchor. Now, you can't afford, if you're on the interior, you can't afford to let those defensive tackles get pushed and push you back in the lap of the quarterback. That takes leverage, that takes strength. These are things that he has. These are the type of attributes that you appreciate when you're watching a kid like Cooper Young. He can snap his hips without bending his back after he engages the defender. He has great leverage. It almost plays football like you would expect a wrestler. Choose the best. 1-0, drive to left center field, going back, and it's off the scoreboard and gone. You can feel the excitement of West Virginia baseball. It's right around the corner. Join us at Wagner Field at Montague County Ballpark for Big 12 matchups against Kansas, TCU, Oklahoma, and Texas Tech, along with games against rivals Pitt, Penn State, and Marshall. Purchase your season tickets now for as low as $120. Mini packages starting at just $20. Order your tickets today at WVUGame.com. My scholarship is super important to me. My message to donors is thank you so much for everything that you've done. It's been a privilege for me to be here. My dreams would not be a reality without it. There's a lot of pride here. Everywhere you go, everybody loves to rep WVU and you know, not everyone's fortunate enough to uh, be on, on some type of scholarship and, and they have to worry about student loans. And it's just a burden that I, I don't have to, to deal with and I'm thankful all the time that I, I was fortunate enough to receive something like that. I just want to say thank you so much to private donors for funding our scholarships and our facilities because it has given me the opportunity to train here at the highest caliber and I know that's not an opportunity that everyone gets to say they've done. I'm very blessed to say that I'm on scholarship and to the donors I'd like to say thank you for everything that you guys have given us. This has been a dream of mine to come here and to compete at WU and you guys have made it possible for me. You can make a difference by joining Country Roads Trust. Your membership gets you exclusive access to student athletes, signed memorabilia, in-person events, and so much more, while allowing the athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness. Work on me, work on three, one, two, three, one! Becoming a member of the Country Roads Trust ensures that WVU stays on top of the NIL landscape in college athletics. That landscape includes trust athletes out in the community making a difference and representing WVU in a positive manner. The path to success has never been more clear and your support of NIL will help pave the way. Your membership has a direct impact on the lives of WVU student athletes now and in the future. To learn more about how you can support Mountaineer Athletics, go to join.countryroadstrust.com. Hey folks. Become a member of Country Roads Trust today. Welcome back in, everyone. It is our National Signing Day program brought to us by the Country Roads Trust. You see the list for West Virginia right now standing at 13. Some Student athletes sign right at the crack of dawn. They start to come out very early and then others will sign as the afternoon goes along. And if you take a look at this class, you know, there are some guys that are having 11 a.m., noon, two o'clock this afternoon, three. Some sign, then have the announcement. Some don't sign, they wait. 
-hmm. and they'll make their official announcement and then sign subsequently, so the list will continue to grow. As a guy who played not at one, not two, but three colleges, Jed was transfer portal before the transfer portal was big. Before it was cool, yeah. Walk, walk us through what the biggest change is when guys leave their high school programs and they make their way into a college environment. So you were ultra successful. I mean, you were the Kennedy Award winner, the best player in the state of West Virginia. You won the Hardman Award, the state amateur athlete of the year. So you were a top shelf. Everything goes well. Mm -hmm. High school game, you've got that down fine. You on an individual level, and then the rest of the guys that you came in with, what changes when you come to college? I think there's an easy answer, but I'll start with one correction. Kennedy Award, I was the quarterback on one of the best teams in West Virginia. <laughs> All right, that's, that's where that comes from, okay? But the off season is easily the biggest change, and it's still changing. I mean, even recently into last off season, we talked about the OTAs, the off season team activities. So think back 30 years ago. 30 plus years ago, when I was coming out of high school, entering the college space, Tony, you'd get an off-season workout packet from the strength and conditioning staff, okay? You'd follow that packet, and then you'd have a conditioning test the first day of camp when you showed up after your physical was done. Now, I got there a little early when I played at Sanford for Terry Bowden and Jimbo Fisher and that crew because we had a quarterback receiver academy about a month to five weeks before camp. So I showed up in town early to be part of the academy. So I was there early, but nevertheless, it's a much different animal for these kids who are showing up in the spring. I can't even begin to imagine how instrumental that is in their early development to take part in actual spring pack practices, 15 spring practices, to say nothing of the workouts you're gonna get with Mike Joseph and his staff for those first months leading up to spring practice. Then you transition to that into the summer months, and the summer months look completely different than they did just a handful of years ago with all the changes we've talked about. So the opportunity for coaches to cultivate these kids has just, it, it's a completely different species than what it once was. So there are tremendous opportunities for them. And I, I've kind of come around on this, Tony. I, when these kids started graduating early and enrolling in the spring, I was like, enjoy your high school senior year. I mean, there's a lot to life. I mean, don't rush things out and go to, go to the prom, do this, do that. But the more things have come along, the more I understand and appreciate why they're doing it. And I see the bigger picture here. So the opportunities in the off season leading up before you ever even start camp, because for us, it really all started in camp. You arrived a couple days before camp. You had your conditioning test to see where you stood to find out if you're going to be on the breakfast club or not, right? And then you're rolling into two a day, sometimes three a days. That's not the case with these right. kids. Think of all the months of work they already have behind them before you even start camp in August. So it's pretty remarkable. It really is. And, I mean, to those days, the coaches would say, well, we're going to have to see what kind of shape our team comes back in. Yeah. Because there yeah, would probably right. be... 75 of your players that went home and you didn't see them from the mm -hmm. time they left campus in the spring till they came back in August camp. So like, we'll have to see. And there was so much more conditioning that went on in August practices oh, yeah. during those days to try no to doubt. get guys into shape. But now it literally is a year round event because when you take a look at the sport itself, and Neil Brown said this, you know, during the season, football, perhaps more so than any other game, is a practice sport sure, absolutely rather than a game sport right mm -hmm. you play 12 you hope you play 13 perfect world you end up playing 16. Mm -hmm. but other than that you're practicing so much more you have got to focus on that aspect of it. it's event oriented and and mentally you got to compartmentalize the sport of football a little differently than some of the other sports As a matter of fact i'm trying to remember if it was gary patterson or which coach it was that said that he didn't like to recruit baseball players because they didn't appreciate, appreciate the value of an event-oriented game. He wanted losses to matter every time you lost something. And the reality of it is when you're playing that many basketball and football games, just to survive mentally and survive the grind, you gotta be able to forge ahead and, and, and withstand a couple losses and just shrug them off. With football, uh, it's a much different animal. So just like you talked about, Tony, you play 12 or 13 days a year out of 365, but just think about simple things that we kind of take for granted in this day and age, like the GPS system, the GPS trackers that are attached to these kids. Different kids utilize them differently. And for those at home watching who might not understand what we're talking about, there's a GPS tracker attached to these kids telling the coaches every step they take in practice, how many steps they took, their average speed for those steps. Some kids utilize that more than others. So just imagine 
imagine showing up as a high school senior, showing up early as a college freshman, and understanding by the end of spring ball, wow, that tracker's pretty cool, here's how I can utilize that to improve my game, instead of showing up in August and having that thrust upon you. So every little dimension of this, there's backstories that people really don't consider unless they've been involved with it, but the game continues to change, okay, hopefully by and large in a favorable direction, but it's a much different animal than it was, not just when I played, but even five, ten years ago. To pick up on that point, as you said, the game is always changing. Mm -hmm. What do you say we talk a little X's and O's here mm -hmm. right now? So West Virginia has just completed, obviously, season 11 in the Big 12 Conference, and the league in the decade that West Virginia's been involved has transitioned from one that was extremely offensive-oriented now to more defense, and the reason why it was so extremely offensive-oriented is you saw uh, a series of quarterbacks go through this league, um, and everyone knows them by name because they play on Sundays now, mm -hmm. right? The Pat Mahomeses, the Baker Mayfields, right? The Kyler Murrays and, and those guys, among others. Where is the game going from an offensive standpoint? It's circular, but uh, Tony, we talked about this back in the heyday of Big 12 offensive football. I mean, I remember we had one stretch when Gibby was here as our D coordinator, in which in a three-game span we faced the number one ranked D offense, the number two ranked offense, the number three ranked offense in the country. And you talked about those premium quarterbacks from Baker Mayfield, from Pat Mahomes on down the line. It wasn't so much about bad defense as it was about exceptional offense, and we struggled to stop those exceptional offenses. And you would even see, once we got to the postseason, the, the same thing would play out with these Big 12 offenses kind of having their way moving the football with, with premium defenses from other leagues, whether it was Oklahoma, Georgia, and the Rose Bowl. Whoever it might be, Big 12 offenses moved the football against whoever they faced. And now it's come around to the point that – don't look now, but when you have Tennessee upsetting Alabama 52-49, to 49, that's not bad defense, that's quality football and it's a shootout, right? So you've seen it come full circle. But when you look at how the game tends to come back around, what happened was, and I think back to what Jimmy Johnson did at Miami and how he revolutionized the game in the late 80s, early 90s. He went for speed and gave up size. He sacrificed size to get sideline to sideline speed. And he was one of the first coaches early on to do that. Now, you saw South Florida do it in the old Big East days. Jim Levitt built his team to win his conference, and that meant you had to beat West Virginia to win the Big East. So he had a small defense that could run sideline to sideline. Now, later in the season, what would happen? They'd travel up north and they'd play these Big East offenses that had NFL offensive lines with tailbacks dotting the eye that were NFL tailbacks from Donald Brown to Ray Rice on down the line, and they leaned on those smallish South Florida defenses. Well, you're seeing that kind of in the game at large. The game at large has been forced for the better part of the last handful of years to defend the entirety of the field against these spread matchups. So now some teams are moving back to size and trying to push you around a little bit. So that's, that's to be expected. So we're just in the middle of another one of those cycles. Yeah, it is. We invite you to stay tuned. Chad Scott, WVU running backs coach, will be joining us in just a little bit as we continue our National Letter of Intent Signing Day program. Stay with us. More coming up. Take a look at our big board, and so far, West Virginia with 13 names and growing. At first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Coliseum, where the spirit of 1.8 million West Virginians wills you to victory. And all the people of Morgantown go banana! I don't think I've ever seen this place as alive as it is tonight. This is as loud a building as we have been in this season. There, there's no place like this. They're going wild here at the Coliseum. Single game tickets are on sale now at WVUGame.com. You can make a difference by joining Country Roads Trust. Your membership gets you exclusive access to student athletes, signed memorabilia, in-person events, and so much more, while allowing the athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness. Work on me, work on three. One, two, three. Woo! 
Becoming a member of the Country Roads Trust ensures that WVU stays on top of the NIL landscape in college athletics. That landscape includes trust athletes out in the community making a difference and representing WVU in a positive manner. The path to success has never been more clear and your support of NIL will help pave the way. Your membership has a direct impact on the lives of WVU student athletes now and in the future. To learn more about how you can support Mountaineer Athletics, go to join.countryroadstrust.com. Hey folks, become a member of Country Roads Trust today. West Virginia University is a place where learning is an adventure, inside and outside. You'll become an innovator, a boundary breaker, an earth shaker. Choose your circle from 30,000 fellow mountaineers and choose your path from hundreds of majors and minors in a community that feels small. And you'll use this to get to class. You'll have room to find your people, your passions, and your purpose. Because we're a place where everyone fits. This is WVU. This is home. When you're choosing your heart care team, the stakes are high. You want answers and a clear path forward, but mostly you just want your life back. The WVU Heart and Vascular Institute can help. Our cardiologists and heart surgeons are national and international leaders in heart care, solving the most difficult cases at West Virginia's number one ranked hospital and highest rated cardiac program by US News and World Report. Your heart care is a choice. Choose the best. Now's your chance to join the Mountaineers for the 2023 season at Milan Pushkar Stadium. Fires the ball. Downfield. Makes the catch in the end zone. Touchdown, West Virginia. Secure your seats to watch the Mountaineers take on Pitt in the return of the Backyard Brawl, as well as five other marquee home games. Place your new season ticket deposit for just $99 at WVUGame.com. Our National Letter of Intent Signing Day program continues. Neil Brown will be joining us in the next hour. And we'll be going over to the Pushkar Center in just a set shake or two to talk with mm -hmm. Chad Scott. There's a list right now, as you can see, uh, from Sean Boyle all the way down to Orion Fisher, West Virginia, um, hitting several areas of need. Uh, one quarterback on that list so far in Sean Boyle, West Virginia also on the offensive line, uh, getting that six foot five body build six foot six body build and that's mm -hmm. one of the biggest things i think that you have seen transition on west virginia's offensive line over the last several years is literally the physical size sure. of that line they have uh, they have gotten longer and uh putting those pieces together high butts and long arms tony you know, that's what we always talk about when you're looking at these big bodied kids, right? That's what, yeah. that's what you want to see. Mean, I mean, you, you brought it down to the general sense, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's high butts and long arms. That's what it's all yeah. about. Hey, what do you say we head over to the Pushkar Center now, where we are joined by West Virginia Assistant Offensive Coordinator and Running Backs Coach Chad Scott. What do you say, Chad? It's good to see you, buddy. Hey, great to see you guys as well. Great day today. Exciting day for Mountaineer football. What does signing day to you mean? I mean, it means a lot. Uh, I mean, and, and, and one word, impact, you know, uh, impact of the future, impact of this program, you know, the guys that you, you know, spent years developing relationships with between them and the families and their coaches, you know, uh, for it all to kind of come into the, the, this, this one day, man, that's impact, you know, it's an impact on their life as well, the impact on their future, impact on our program. So uh, it's a, it's a bunch of feelings all in one. It's a, it's a great feeling. Individually, tell us a little bit about how your room is growing today and the young men that will be joining you uh, when the start of this next season begins when just a couple of weeks away as far as uh, January rolls around. Yeah, uh, Jaheen White, uh, electric, electric athlete. Electric athlete, dynamic with the football. Some of the kid that had over 2,300 yards this season. 
of 34 touchdowns, average over 10 yards a carry. Uh, this is a kid that's that's a threat to score from any, from anywhere in the football field. Has the speed to go the distance, catch the ball really well. Strong, physical kid, but he's an electric athlete that has the ability to go score every time he touches the ball. And, and in this offense, and that, that's exactly what we need, a kid. You know, I, I was describing guys, I was talking about in the running back room. We don't want to be good, we want to be scary. And them guys that are scary, the guys that defense coordinators have to plan for. That's the kind of kid that you got to account for because he has that dynamic ability to hit the table. You know, I've never seen a running back, I've never seen a player that one of the stats listed is how many two point conversions he scored. He had 19 two point conversions, coach. I mean, Think about that. How much do they lean on this kid in times of crisis and critical moments? You know, it's, you know, it's interesting. They lean on him heavily. heavily. And here's what's big time I love, too. You know, uh, that kid played in some of his best games. They played against the best competition. And even going back into this season, you know, last year he might have been some, somewhat of a surprise to some teams in, you know, in his area, in his conference. But obviously, come back to his senior year, I mean, he's a kid that everybody knew about. Everybody knew we need to stop number four. If we stop that kid, we got a chance to win this ball game. And the kids still went out and had big games, you know. So when you got kids like that that has that kind of ability, even though teams are preparing to stop them, still go out there and, you know, and uh, be able to excel versus, you know, the, whatever defense that is facing and the people that's trying to stop them, that's elite. And that kid, and then have a threat like that to not kick a field goal, we just trust in the fact that I'd rather get, uh, get my kid the ball to go score a touchdown and kick a field goal. Shows the kind of trust that uh, the coaches have in him and the kind of and the ability he has, you know. Well, it takes Outside a village. Half. So obviously, if you step outside your room, you're not confined to the running back room in terms of your activity on the recruiting trail. So let's move beyond Jaheim and let's talk about, start with James Hurd, but that's, again, you're not confined to that either. Work your way through a couple names that you were attached to in the recruiting process in addition to James Hurd. James Hurd, Josiah Trotter, and, uh, and Cooper Young thus far. Outside of Jaheim, and you know, uh, James Hurd, you know, interesting uh, by James Hurd. I'd offered James Hurd back in ninth grade, <laughs> probably during the time and when I offered him. People probably wondering who was this guy offering. You know, he wasn't as big as he is right now. He might have, he might have been 190 pounds when I first offered him. And now he's a kid. He was 200 and about 30 pounds. But, you know, so I've been knowing him and his family for years now. So you talk about you talk about like what, what does this day mean? Like, you know. It's even bigger than this kid. I've been proving this kid now for four years. So, you know, I've got a great relationship with him, his whole family. You know, I've been knowing him for a long time, seeing this kid grow as if I've been coaching the kid in high school. And every year he's gotten that much better. Some kid this year that played nine games, had 18 sacks in nine games, won the South Jersey Player of the Year, won the New Jersey Defensive Player of the Year. This kid is a true dynamic pass rusher. Wow, that's amazing. He, he, Chad, he, how he, do you. Just, how did you ID him at ninth grade? As you said, he's grown a lot since then. What was it that you saw as a ninth grader that you said was going to translate to this level? Well, you know, it's some things, it's some things that you can't teach. Uh, and I tell you, in, in ninth grade, uh, just and being honest, uh, between talking to him and his dad, he showed a knack for having the instinctive pass rush ability. And when I say that, that what is that knack? That kid is hands are uh, very impressive. And he has a jujitsu, like a jujitsu background, you know, like a jujitsu or taekwondo. So he has that kind of background. And he understood that at, uh, at an early age. That if you if you beat the hands, you beat the man. He understands, he understood at ninth grade that if offensive linemen can get their hands on him, he's beat. And so his dad got him involved in, like I said, with the jujitsu and whatnot, and, and got him to uh, really understand how to work his hands and, and defeat linemen, you know, just you know by using his hands. So I saw that early on in the ninth grade. Obviously, you know, been recruiting the area, just kind of scouring the area, you know, uh, you know, you know, reaching out to coaches, them reaching back and saying, oh, you know, take a look at this kid. And I think he has something. And I took a look at that kid and I saw it. He's gotten better and better. And so I pre it's funny because he called me this morning and said, Coach, I think I appreciate you believing in me and sticking with me throughout this whole time. And heck, I told him, I appreciate you guys being loyal to me and, you know, and believing in me as well. So uh, excited about him and, you know, He's only gotten better and better throughout high school, and I can only see his future here getting even better. I'll tell you this, Coach. When you talk to high school coaches in that eastern Pennsylvania sector, okay, we got a lot of fans out there. You've won them over. Uh, you know, talking to Russ Stoner, uh, great job he's done at York. He can't say enough, enough good things about you and Coach Brown and the staff. So 
Uh, here's what I want you to do. I want you to transition into talking about another Eastern PA kid and, and, and uh, Josiah Trotter, but walk us through how you forge those relationships to get those high school coaches one over and know that they can trust you. Right. Well, you know, uh, I do things the right way, at least, you know, in my opinion, the right way would be officers. Of those, you know, uh, anytime you can reach out and, uh, you know, stand and offer to these kids, it's only right that you inform the high school coaches, you know, of that honor so they know what's going on. And, and from that point, you know, I do a phenomenal job of developing a relationship with the, uh, with the parents. And I'm always making sure that between myself and the recruit, the recruit and the coach, the recruit, the coach and the parents, that we're all on the same page and you know, they know what's been said to the kid and what's going on and, and, uh, and the whole nine. So it's never it's never an area or a time where you know, well, I, a coach or a parent can say, well, I didn't know this or I wasn't informed of this. So do a phenomenal job from, uh, I'm talking from start to finish, uh, being transparent with the coaches and the, uh, and the parents in regards to uh, what's going on with the recruit. And Josiah Trotter, he played seven games this year. It was first team off state. You know, it's kind of hard for a kid to play seven games on any level in any state, and you still make first team off state. That's kind of impact that he had in his football team. You're talking about a guy that you know is obviously his dad is Jeremiah Trotter, NFL legend. Uh, so he comes from a phenomenal bloodline and background. And, but this kid is diagno his diagnosis of run, pass, and the ability to be able to see it and get downhill and find that ball is overly impressive. Size, speed, and not just speed to be able to get down here, but also the speed to be able to play sideline to sideline. He had a pick six this year, two forced fumbles, and so this is, and, and he's very smart, very smart, very instinctive. So, you know, saw it in this kid early as well. And uh, Coach Coons did a phenomenal job recruiting him as well. Uh, and he let him know he, he can help him take his game to another level. So, between myself and Coach Coons, doing a phenomenal job recruiting uh, Josiah, man, this kid, he trusted us to come here and take his game to another level, impact our defense. Let's talk Cooper Young. Uh, again, a kid who, you know, he was an offensive tackle at the high school level. Is he kind of a kid that you see translating maybe moving to the interior? Either way, he's going to be pushing some guys around, right? He's going to be pushing some guys around either way. And i tell you what's phenomenal about uh, Cooper Young. Uh, they got this award in Pennsylvania called the Mini Max Award. I think it's very similar to the Maxwell Award, where they honor uh, the guys for, like, elite performance or excellent performance, rather, on the football field and out the football field in the community. And uh, Cooper Young's won the 55 kids in that award. First of all, he won the award. And he's uh, he won that award being one to 55. So that speaks the volume of how that kid is just on out the football field. But he's gotten better and better ever since I recruited him uh, from the junior year to the senior year. I mean, he really took the game to another level. And he has the versatility to play across the board. He will be probably an interior guy for us, but he has the feet, athleticism, and length to play on the edge. But you know, initially, you know, being able to make an impact early on, he will help us inside. But he's a mauler, but he's also athletic. I had a chance to go see him this uh, this fall, and he was playing against a guy that was fairly athletic, and that guy didn't he couldn't he didn't sniff the quarterback. So very excited about what he's going to go front with the guys that we already have. Speaking of guys, Chad, that you already have, take us inside your running back room, if you would, right now, as we transition from this season and going ahead to next season. Uh, you had the explosive end of the year for Jalen Anderson. Uh, you saw big plays throughout the course of the season by you know, Tony Mathis and, and your guys all produced, all at different times it seemed, but they had a good synergy there. Now you go into this room. Um, you got to be smiling like the butcher's dog, I would think, at this point, because <laughs> yeah. you, you, you got some yeah. guys that, that have been on the field and you can trust. So now, where are you as far as your development program for those guys? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is work on that, work on when hopping off the ground uh, this spring. So, you know, so guys will take little shots at us uh, on Saturdays when guys spend too much time on the ground. But I'm excited about these guys. Obviously, they all got uh, in-game experience. They've all had major production at. Uh, well, I like that. On the national level, you know, like when I say that, I'm talking about like obviously CJ coming out Thursday night and you know, on ESPN and you know, Tony with the big Baylor game with ESPN and Jalen with the last game with ESPN too. And, and obviously, uh, Tony, you know, and, and Justin Johnson with the Virginia Tech game on Thursday night. So, sure. all those guys got a uh, great experience. Uh, uh, as in regards to development, obviously, you know, CJ being tight end coming over, it's still a lot for him to learn in, in terms of the running back position. He, he just has a natural knack of making plays with the ball of his hands. That's just an instinctive, intuitive ability that he has. So obviously just continuing to uh, you know, help him just 
continue to mold and, and become the running back, the all around running back that he's capable of becoming. Uh, obviously, uh, guys like Tony, just consistency. You know, Tony's been around for a while. I really saw, uh, you know, the fruits of his labor be able to uh, be seen on this year and uh, just continue to uh, progress with him and, and continue to see it, as, see it as good running the football like he did this year. Uh, and Justin, just continue to come along. Uh, you know, he did a lot of good things this year and, and you know, just continue to get better and see a little quicker. Uh, you know, he had some plays that he left out there. He'll tell you that, too. So, and then Jalen, man, right now with Jalen, just consistency right now. You know, he really uh, came on toward the end of last year. I always told you, uh, and I, we always knew that kid had ability. You know, he just had to be, you know, consistent off the football field. And once you start doing that toward the mid middle to the end of the year, man, you really saw what he's capable of. So really with all those guys at this point right now, just going to continue to be consistency, uh, getting their bodies in shape to be able to, handle an uh, even heavier load than they did last year because I mean, the men's opportunity uh, looking forward to them and handling, handling that, running the football and yeah. making plays inside of the ball, catching running balls well. My last question to you is twofold, uh, Coach Scott. Let's start with this. First of all, I want to know what you're still clocked at. I've seen you on the sidelines uh, multiple times this year. It was in the <laughs> rain in Stillwater when Jalen busts along. Well, you're beating everybody down to the sidelines. That's, that's question one. But question two is – Let's talk about the culture of that room because it fascinates me. I'm on the sidelines. I'm in the locker room. It's not lip service to say you have fostered and built a culture in that room in which the kids truly appreciate and revel in the success of the other guys in the room as much as their own success. How have you done that? I'll tell you what. Uh, them guys, they take tremendous pride. We all talk about taking pride in a unit. Um, and I'll be honest with you, man. Those guys, like, they the big, they the biggest cheerleaders of themselves, man. Like, there is no selfishness in the room. We talk about does your talent equal your production. You know what I mean? It ain't about just playing hard. It ain't about just playing good. They talk about going and producing. And all of those guys produce at an elite level, and they coach one another up. They all root for each other. And it all starts even when we in the uh, meeting room. They help one another out. Even on the practice field, they help one another out. So it, it's no selfishness in the room at all. Be honest with you, when one goes out and does it, they'll come on the sideline and say, man, when I get my shot, I can't miss it either. I got, I got to get a big one. So they all root for one another. It's a tremendous feeling to have. It's a great pride in the room. I do a great job of, you know, uh, fostering that togetherness as well, uh, being there with those guys on the football field. We do a lot of things together off the football field. And so uh, it, it's really transcending on, onto the football field. A lot of those guys go out there and play with, uh, you know, the kind of confidence they need. We all talk about in that room too, man, just being in a good mental space. And as part of being a good mental space, man, is just being able to support one another and be happy for one another. And and so with that kind of with that kind of positivity and togetherness, you know, being a good mental space, they got the physical building, man. So them guys just go out there and, and do what they do naturally and, and be there for one another. It's a great feeling to have, you know, just got to continue to keep going. Uh, getting back, you mentioned C.J. Donaldson, and this season was totally unexpected as he made that quick transition. So now that you know, okay, now you're in the running back room for real, it's just not a visit, right. what are the biggest things that he has to develop here in the offseason? I would say uh, getting, a, getting a plan shape where he can play repetitive plays so he can repeat his best. Uh, he's going to have to do a phenomenal job and, uh, and not only just recovery, but also just getting in the kind of the game shape where he can repeat his best. Uh, obviously, he, didn't, he wasn't used to carrying the kind of load consistently uh, playing a running back position. So he's going to have to get in like, you know, and I'm not saying he's not, he's in terrible shape, but he's going to have to get in like the running back shape where he can repeat his best. You know, if he's capable of going to hit a 30 yard run, he could possibly come back and play two, three more plays after that. You know, that's, that's probably his, uh, his biggest, uh, you know, adjustment this uh, this offseason, just working on his conditioning and getting to the point where he play repetitive plays and he repeat his best. The one question you have yet to answer, you failed to answer, was Jed's questioning you how fast you can run the 40. The question here is, we, we definitely are assuming it's still below five. Is it, is it in <laughs> fact, <laughs> could you snap one it's off, could you snap yeah. one off below yeah. five if you had to? Yeah, it de it's definitely below five. It's definitely below five. Now, I tell those guys, I, first of all, I got competitive speed. That's what I tell the guys. I got competitive speed. I, however fast it takes me to get up down that sideline, <laughs> uh, that's what it's going to take. And I figure high stepping it gives, me, it gives my hamstrings a better chance of with a, <laughs> not being <my> pulled. <laughs> Hey, I haven't seen anybody catching from behind no, on the sideline, no. Tony. So, we, yeah. Hey, you know what? We'll break down that tape. What we'll do is, you know, GPS and everything, 
we'll watch a highlight play on the sideline of you, and then we'll prorate it out <laughs> to right. see what would have been a, for a full 40 yards. We'll let you know what it is. Next to Rich Eyes. And, uh, I, when I tell you this, you know, it's uh, it's obviously easy to uh, you know talk about the, the bad things or the negative plays and whatnot. So I'm always making sure, even in practice and taking on game days, man, that I celebrate those guys' biggest moments. Sometimes, heck, you see me. Side high, like you know, high stepping up the side line, they might have a really good ten yard run where they just had a physical finish, man. I think it's very important for those guys to see me just as excited them making those big plays as you know their family or their teammates. So it's a lot of bad things that go on, a lot of plays they might miss, but the ones they don't miss, man. I'm the biggest cheerleader. Yeah, well, we're they were a big cheerleader of you because you've done a fantastic job. As we've said throughout the course of this season, so many different guys had to step up from CJ, Tony, Justin, all the way through, and then Jalen at the end. So uh, it, it was a really, really good season. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Uh, Chad, have yourself a great Christmas. Well, thank you all for your time, man. Merry Christmas to you all as well. Merry Christmas. All right, you bet. There he is, Chad Scott. All right, stay with us. Neil Brown, head coach, is on deck, and we'll chat with him as we continue this NSD Take Me Home, presented by Country Roads Trust. You can make a difference by joining Country Roads Trust. Your membership gets you exclusive access to student athletes, signed memorabilia, in-person events, and so much more, while allowing the athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness. Work on me, work on three, one, two, three, work! Becoming a member of the Country Roads Trust ensures that WVU stays on top of the NIL landscape in college athletics. That landscape includes trust athletes out in the community making a difference and representing WVU in a positive manner. The path to success has never been more clear and your support of NIL will help pave the way. Your membership has a direct impact on the lives of WVU student athletes now and in the future. To learn more about how you can support Mountaineer Athletics, go to join.countryroadstrust.com. Hey folks. Become a member of Country Roads Trust today. The air feels different on fall Saturdays in West Virginia. Familiar roads lead us on early morning drives to a place where we feel alive. And traditions bring together a fierce fan base united by the same passion. West Virginia football. As West Virginia's bank, we've been there and we'll continue to be there. United Bank, proud to be united with the Mountaineers. I need to try it first. Hey kids, now's your chance to join the Mountaineer Kids Club. Members receive their very own membership t-shirt with free admission to select WVU sporting events, a personalized happy birthday video message from the WVU Spirit Squad, exclusive shopwvu.com discount codes, and invitations to exclusive events and more. Join now for just $25 and don't miss out on Mountaineer Kids Club fun. Visit wvusports.com slash kids club to sign up today. at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mountaineer Nation, we need you to help us make the Coliseum a very special place this season. Your dedication to the gold and blue will fuel us. It will provide passion, energy, and a competitive drive to our student athletes. So get your tickets now. Then go recruit your friends and neighbors and let's make some noise. Let's go! Single game tickets are available now at WVUGame.com. Throws down the left 
sideline. He's got a man, and that pass is caught in the end zone. Touchdown, West Virginia. It is a great night to be a Mountaineer wherever you may be. National Signing Day continues Take Me Home, presented by the Country Roads Trust, West Virginia's list to this point. Again, there will be additions as the day goes on. In fact, there will be additions as the weeks and the months go on. Mm. This is a very fluid situation that we are in in college football, largely in part to the transfer portal and everything that it has brought to college football. So the portal is literally open until the middle of next month. Then it will close, and then teams will be allowed to go through spring practice, and then it will open up again. So with that being said, how, as a recruiting staff, do you play this game out? Well, it's an ongoing process, Tony. First of all, even though you might not be inking an abundance of portal commits, that doesn't mean you're not having an abundance of portal conversations, okay? Because one of the things about it is this. What we've learned in this short 18 month or so window since the portal really opened in the nature that it has with the one time free pass, okay, and then you attach NIL to it. Here's what we've seen. The Blue Bloods don't necessarily have to win in the portal to win on the field. There's exceptions to that, but they don't have to, okay? The non-Blue Bloods do. You need to find a path to success. So let me walk you through some numbers. Guess who finished? There's different rankings for the portal in terms of off-season quality, who graded the highest in their off-season activity. So if you look at the Power 5 schools, like on3.com is one of the rankings, okay? They, they track this pretty meticulously. Uh, guess who finished 65th in the Power 5? Last season's activ activity, which would mean this season's wins and losses on the field, Georgia. Guess who finished 63rd? Ohio State. Stop me when you see a trend emerging. Michigan. 39th, so really didn't help or hurt themselves. Kind of a middling affair with that, okay? Guess who won in the portal? TCU, the other playoff team. Those are the four playoff teams. TCU being the one non-Blue Blood. They finished 10th in this particular ranking. Now, in part, that was in, in uh, at least one of the things that contributed to that was Sonny Dykes being in position in his first year on the job to take some of the better players from SMU with him to TCU, and that played a significant role in their success. But that's what we found out in the short little time is you have to find a path, okay? Uh, now, you're going to have to strike some kind of balance between quality, high character, scholarship kids at the high school level because that's still going to be the lifeblood of your program. But let's not be naive enough to think that the portal numbers with 1,300 or so kids, I mean, by the time you hit refresh, the numbers change, okay? With 13 or, or so hundred kids at the Division I level, some scholarships aren't being fleeced away that otherwise in the past would have been given out right. to student athletes coming out of high school. It's happening, okay? But that doesn't mean you sacrifice uh, the lifeblood of your program, which is what we're talking about today, and that's why we're celebrating these kids today, because they are still going to be instrumental. But here's what's changed. In the past, let's say you're after a blue chipper, and not in the uh, 10th or 11th hour, but in the 9th hour, you lose out on them. So you've invested a year plus, a year and a half into forging a relationship with his coaching staff, with his family, you know the kid. Well, in the past, you might have bailed out because of a resource issue, okay? You might have bailed out and said, that's it, he's going elsewhere, he's moving on. But I'm gonna draw it back to what I always say about Bill Belichick. They tell this story about Bill Belichick. One of the things he would do pre-draft is bring potential prospects in that he knew he wasn't gonna draft with the Patriots. And they're saying, well, why would he do that? These, these rookies that he wasn't gonna draft. Because he knew when that rookie deal told and it was up and they entered free agency, he would already have a relationship and some insight there. Same thing on the recruiting trail now with these blue chippers. Instead of bailing out after the ninth hour, you continue with that relationship with an understanding that they're one bad or sour conversation away wherever they do land from patting them on the shoulder and say, hey, remember us? Sure. We kind of had a lot of love for you when you came out of high school, and that's not how we operate. If you're not happy with where you're at, I see you enter the portal, come on back. And now you might even argue you're in a more secure position because they have a one-time free pass. 
But once they exercise that one-time free pass outside of a waiver, now this doesn't apply to graduates, they have more mobility. But So these are the considerations that have to be afforded to this new reality. This yeah. is still gonna matter. What we're looking at and doing today is always gonna be instrumental if you wanna build the foundation of a successful and winning program. But you have to find a path to win in this new portal as well. Yep, and some really good points. And you take a look through the years how West Virginia has caught players on the rebound mm -hmm. by maintaining good relationships once they do go to mm -hmm. another location. So they never burn the bridge. The bridge was always open, and sometimes yep. they do come back toward this way, and that happens at a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. All right, do stay with us. There's the list right now so far for West Virginia. Thirteen players have inked on the dotted line. The days of the fax machine on signing day probably have gone the way of the dinosaur, but one way or the other, the N letters of intent, NLIs, not to be confused with NILs, the a NLIs. What alphabet soup. Uh, yes, exactly, are coming our way. Stay with us. Neil Brown scheduled to join us. More coming up. Country Roads Trust presenting the National Signing Day. Take me home. We'll be back. When you're choosing your heart care team, the stakes are high. You want answers and a clear path forward, but mostly you just want your life back. The WVU Heart and Vascular Institute can help. Our cardiologists and heart surgeons are national and international leaders in heart care, solving the most difficult cases at West Virginia's number one ranked hospital and highest rated cardiac program by US News and World Report. Your heart care is a choice. Choose the best. 1-0, drive to left center field, going back, and it's off the scoreboard and gone. You can feel the excitement of West Virginia baseball. It's right around the corner. Join us at Wagner Field at Montagalia County Ballpark for Big 12 matchups against Kansas, TCU, Oklahoma, and Texas Tech, along with games against rivals Pitt, Penn State, and Marshall. Purchase your season tickets now for as low as $120. Mini packages starting at just $20. Order your tickets today at WVUGame.com. My scholarship is super important to me. My message to donors is thank you so much for everything that you've done. It's been a privilege for me to be here. My dreams would not be a reality without it. There's a lot of pride here. Everywhere you go, everybody loves to rep WVU and you know, not everyone's fortunate enough to uh, be on, on some type of scholarship and, and they have to worry about student loans. And It's just a burden that I, I don't have to, to deal with and I'm thankful all the time that I, I was fortunate enough to receive something like that. I just want to say thank you so much to private donors for funding our scholarships and our facilities because it has given me the opportunity to train here at the highest caliber and I know that's not an opportunity that everyone gets to say they've done. I'm very blessed to say that I'm on scholarship and to the donors I'd like to say thank you for everything that you guys have given us. This has been a dream of mine to come here and to compete at WU and you guys have made it possible for me. You can make a difference by joining Country Roads Trust. Your membership gets you exclusive access to student athletes, signed memorabilia, in-person events, and so much more, while allowing the athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness. Work on me, work on three, one, two, three, one! Becoming a member of the Country Roads Trust ensures that WVU stays on top of the NIO landscape in college athletics. That landscape includes trust athletes out in the community making a difference and representing WVU in a positive manner. The path to success has never been more clear and your support of NIL will help pave the way. Your membership has a direct impact on the lives of WVU student athletes now and in the future. To learn more about how you can support Mountaineer Athletics, go to join.countryroadstrust.com. Hey folks. Become a member of Country Roads Trust today.
We welcome you back. National Signing Day continues. Take me home 2022 into 2023. And so far the list for West Virginia, 13 future Mountaineers on that list. And again, it will continue to grow as the days and the weeks go on. What do you say we head back over now to the Push Car Center? We are joined by head coach Neil Brown. Neil, <laughs> thanks so much for being with us. Let's jump on in here has the day played out to this point with what you've been expecting yeah first of all hey good morning guys appreciate y'all doing this and i know jed has done his homework and <laughs> i was standing right off camera listening i'm impressed yeah well as you well know <laughs> nothing nothing uh gets by him he goes down to the tertiary uh, level than that. I don't know what comes after tertiary, but he he digs down <laughs> there. Question. Hey, if you but, were to put an overview, Jed, Jed, you know you're doing a good job because Tony just went into his dictionary and he's trying to show you up with his use of words. So <laughs> there you go. Like, hey. he, he's feeling inferior because of your research. I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to is is Jed's pictures off the mountain when we get this snowstorm here oh, yeah. at the end of the week, and he They're is for sure going to have a white Christmas. So I'm looking forward to that. Tony, we got to start with this. There's 168 hours in the week, okay? And the last seven days, how many of those 168 have you actually slept? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, this, is a, this is a crazy time. And it's really, really since we got, we played the Oklahoma State, and you see me kind of, I have to have my phone under me. And so if you hear it ring or something, that's kind of what the world we're living in right now. Um, but... It's really since the Oklahoma State game, you know, you go in and you got about uh, three to five days there where you sit down and and it's a dead period, which is much needed. It's a really a, a positive rule change. And you're able to sit down with your entire roster and, and talk to them. And you really have frank discussions. Hey, where are you at? You know, what's the future look like? Um, because as you both know, but I, I don't know if all our listening audience knows our viewing audience, I should say, is, you know, we still have 85 scholarships. That's what it is. You know, and the, the world has changed. We don't necessarily have to only take 25 year in, year in, and year out. But our, our number is 85. And for us to be able to sign the high school kids we're going to sign today, probably a couple more in February, and then bring in the transfers in January and May, um, you know, there's got to be roster movement. So you have those conversations. And you really work to, to try to hold on to the guys that that's important for you to hold. And for the most part, you know, probably one for sure, maybe two. We'll see how it plays out here in the next few weeks um, that we wanted to keep. We were able to keep. And then some other guys have made decisions to go look for, for better opportunities. And you can't blame it. You know, you got a certain number of years to play college football and, and they want to maximize those. And so you understand that. And then you get on the road. And even though the rules have changed and we move signing day back a week, you still really have two weeks to go see all your high school commits and any transfer priorities. Anybody that's in the portal that's a, that's a transfer priority. So, and, and Coleman Barnes, our chief of staff, he would know this for sure, but I think we made, you know, upwards of 30 plus visits into homes or schools, seeing high school recruits and, and transfer portal priorities. So it's been a busy time. And then on top of that, you've got all the visits, right? So we had visits the uh, three weekends in a row. And then really, we had a we had an official visitor leave at about 10 o'clock on Sunday night. And we'd had an official, at least one official visitor in for about 12 days in a row. And so uh, today, it, it'll be a, uh, you know, when we finally close this out, um, We'll have, we'll have a good uh, staff Christmas party tonight and, and take a break. If you were to characterize, Neil, this class as a whole, what have you been able to add to your roster? Well, I think this is we're going to sign, you know, approximately 16. It could go up to as many as 18, but I think we'll be right at, right at 16. And, and so – when it and we've had to we've had a couple coaching changes here in the last uh, in the last week too. So any anytime you go through that, there's there's a little bit of uneasiness. But um, you know we've kind of taken the stance: if you're going to sign with us, um, if we've already if you've already taken an official visit, then 
And if you've been committed and you're going to sign, you're going to do that in, in December. We're not, we're not going to wait until February. So um, we've had one guy that, that wanted to wait and we're just not, that's not what we're going to do right now. Um, and we've had one that's kind of flip flop, but the rest of the guys have, have really stayed uh, consistent. Um, this is, this is a really solid class. You know, I think if you start looking, let's go kind of defensively first. And the two guys that really stick out to me um, and, and have kind of been leaders in this class, really three guys that, that have really been leaders in this class, it starts at linebacker. And that's a, that's a position of need for us. Um, and Josiah Trotter, you know, he's a state champion. His brother's playing at high level at Clemson. His father was obviously a longtime NFL player. And he, he played at an extremely high level this year at St. Joe's Prep. And extremely excited about him. He, uh, he's got a chance to come in and play right away. And he'll be here in January. And then James Hurd, edge pass rusher that's got speed. Um, he wasn't blocked all year at Camden High School. And, and Jed, I'm sure you've watched his film. And he, he can really, he's going to add something to it. He'll help us on third downs for sure. Uh, from first game on, he'll be here in January. Then another defensive guy is Ben Cutter. Ben Cutter just got done with the Shrine Bowl, um, and he won a state championship in North Carolina. And he's going to be here in January, and he's going to be able to play right now. And then Josiah Jackson is an early grad that um, we've seen live multiple times. He's going to be able to compete right away at corner. And then if you flip it over offensively, um, yeah, you know, I think our offensive line group is another really solid class that is going to come in and have a year to develop. And I think just like the last two classes, these guys are after their red shirt year are going to be really able to contribute. And you're going to see us continue to add quality depth at the offensive line position. And then uh, Sean Boyle is a really solid player. Um, he's a guy that's kind of flying under the radar. And when people see him this spring um, at the spring game and a and, and couple of the open practices, they're going to be like, hey, where, where did this guy come from? You're talking about a two-time state champion. He played in an offense that that has allowed them to win a lot of games at Charlotte Catholic, but his, his stats haven't been just off the charts because they run the football. But he's, he's a highly talented guy. His mom actually from Morgantown. Um, and then the running back room, Jaheim White is special. Uh, he's going to be a fan favorite. He He's small in size, but he's dynamic. He can catch the ball in the backfield. He's an inside, outside runner. And then Rodney Gallagher, or I, I don't know. I, I got to be careful. I don't, some of these haven't came in. Y'all are supposed to show me this list that's signed right now. Yeah, we'll put the list up. Uh, the doesn't list co- up doesn't cost anything trouble. extra to put the list up to show you the 13 put, put, that we have on the there. So go ahead and take a look. Trouble. We're all good. Yeah, so you I, mentioned I Boyle. In yeah, uh, you want to, let's let's talk. You just want to let's talk about these guys. I got some time with you all here. Let's yep. let's just talk about them. Jed. You want to go through these guys and we'll talk about them one by one. Uh, yeah, positionally, let's start uh, talk about Boyle and let's transition into Braham. Let's talk about that. You t- you were you were talking about Boyle. One of the things, Coach, I saw was he's he's kind of sneaky, athletic, compact delivery. Throws a very catchable ball. He's productive, right? Uh, so there's a championship pedigree there. So. Let's, I think the one of the neat things about him is his mom is a Morgantown High grad and a WVU grad. He, uh, you can watch the film. He's really smooth, and so for a guy that uh, a lot of his background is kind of in a in a wing T offense, um, he's got a uh, a winning pedigree. That's a really good high school, and I think you use this term sneaky athletic. And that's that's extremely accurate. You know, he is he ran well. We had him in our camp. He ran well. Um, he's a quick learner. He uh, he's been in a different style offense, so I don't think he has a whole lot of bad habits. Hasn't been in the shotgun very much at all in his career. And so we're looking forward to getting him here. I think his upside is really high. Let's talk some uh, Jaheim White uh, again. This is a kid who. Coach, I couldn't help but notice, and I'm not trying to put this stress on the kid, but Steve Slayton showed up from Conwell Egan High School at 5'10", a buck 84, right? 
He was 184 pounds, and he's a strider. When I see Jaheim White, I see a strider, a guy that once he breaks into the second level, almost looks like he's returning a kickoff. Yeah. You know, if, you, if Jaheim showed up um, at our camp before his junior year, and he was really a, he's really been productive his whole high school career uh, from his freshman year on. He's the school's all-time leading rusher there in York uh, at William Penn High School. And his numbers, they look like video gamers. I mean, it, it's his yards per carry, what he's done. Um, he ran really fast at our camp and he lined up at wide out and he, because the competition running backs and linebackers wasn't good enough for him in this camp that we had. So he went to wide out and he won multiple routes over two division one signees at defensive back. And, and Chad Scott, who I think evaluates at a high level, he was all in. And so we, we, uh, we verbally offered him soon after, and he's one of the first commits this class. He, uh, he committed right, uh, right after we beat Iowa state a year ago and stayed true to it. Um, he's an early grad. He'll be here. And he's going to add to a running back room where, as you see us make some changes offensively, you're going to see us with more than one running back on the field and, and playing multiple guys. And he's a guy that I think, with his skill set, that we're going to be able to get the ball to and use right away. Along that line, you mentioned multiple running backs on the field at the same time going forward, Neil. We had Chad Scott on in just a little bit, and it's a great point because that room is full, and now it's full of productive players. In a big picture, what could that look like of having multiple running backs at the same time? Well, the, the thing about with our guys, and so when you start looking at that, like Jaheim can line up in the backfield and also can line up in the slot. So that gives you some versatility. He's a guy that's really good in space. We can use him, use him in some of our motion. Uh, some things we did with Sam James, getting some touches over the last three years. Uh, we can do that with Jaheim. C.J. Donaldson has the receiver background, and so he's a great route runner. Not a good route runner. He's a great route runner. And so he gives us the ability to continue to do that. Um, and we can move him around. Um, and then we got another guy that we're going to have today that's going to – he puts the big and big league backs, and his paperwork will be in later today. And so CJ and, and, the, and the future signee, um, they have the size that allow them to block um, anybody that's going to be in the box. And then Justin and Tony both – have shown great versatility. And then Jalen Anderson, um, he, and, and I, I talked about him, I, I talked about him last on purpose because Jalen Anderson, who really came on at the end of the year, is some of his best highlights at Perry High School over in Ohio, where when they went empty and he ran option routes, he ran corner routes, he ran go routes. Um, and he's a really good blocker. And you saw that the last two games of the season in blitz pickup and being a, a lead blocker. Um, and so all of those guys have versatility, both as receivers, as runners, and uh, blockers in both pass protection and the run game. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun tools. I think part of the offensive coach's job is to take the pieces that you have and, and mold them into the most productive unit. And I'll tell you, as an offensive staff, we're going to have fun. We're going to have fun with these, with these running backs we have and, and figuring out ways to, to get them on the field. And sticking to that side, let's talk about another early enrollee. Uh, his body type makes things exciting in terms of where he might be able to go. you got a kid in T.J. Johnson showing up. He stands 6'4", he's rangy, 210 pounds in that range. Where can you go with a kid like that? Yeah, he's only going to continue to grow. Um, He's got great ball skills. Uh, we've had him in camp for three years now, and to watch his steady improvement has, has been impressive. Um, he's a legacy. Father played here. Uh, mother is a is a WVU grad as well, and uh, she's all in. She's all in on the Mountaineers, and and it's been a fun family to recruit. the The thing about TJ is his body, how he grows, is going to determine where he is. Uh, when he gets here uh, in January in a few weeks, most of his work's going to be done in the slot. And he's going to be a big slot receiver for us. 
but we think he's got a chance to fill out and get up to 235 and 240 and be a real pass uh, receiving tight end. You know, that's something that, as you see, like um, O'Loughlin the past two years was going to be that kind of guy for us. And then unfortunately, he has the knee injuries. Uh, so he doesn't. He wasn't able to put up the numbers we hoped he we hoped he would, or be as productive vertical in the pass game as we we, we were hoping he would be. Not due to anything for him, just just because of injuries. But that's a missing piece for us offensively. Our tight ends, Traylon Davis, who's returning, and Brian Palinde, who uh, who graduated, they were great on the ball blockers and and really good job in the run game. Traylon made some plays in the pass game out in the flats, and he'll continue to do that. Um, but we've got to get uh, uh, some tight ends vertical in the pass game. And we think if TJ will, will grow and fill out, which we do think he will, he can be one of those type guys for us uh, down the road. Hey, Neil, from one legacy and TJ Johnson to another, Noah Braham from right here in Morgantown. What do you guys like and what he brings to the program? Football player, Tony. He, he's a football player um, and watched him, you know, really over the last uh, four years, really since since I've been here. Um, obviously, his dad's legacy here, uh, walk on from University High School, walks on as a tight end, ends up being one of the best offensive linemen that's ever played here, goes on and plays in, in the NFL for – I, I think it was 12 years and, and very distinguished career with the Bengals. Now he's coaching here at University High School and giving back. And I think Noah's just a football player. You know, we were really honest with him during the recruiting process. So I'm not sure what your best player is, what your best, uh, not, I mean, your best position is. We just know you're a football player. And we think he can play a multitude of positions. You know, we're going to start him as kind of an H back tight end role. Um, and they used him some like that at university during his uh, career there. Uh, he's a good route runner, has great hand, great hands. If he, if he, if we needed him to play defense, we think he can play Mike linebacker, or he could play our bandit position on the line of scrimmage. He did both of those things at University High School. I just thought he was way too good a football player to get out of state. So we wanted to get him here, get him in our program. He's he loves ball. He loves he loves the Mountaineers. And um, he's going to be a really good football player. Uh, and we're going to start him on offense. And I tell you the other thing, too, as we evaluate him, he'll, he's going to be a great player on special teams for us. Hey, one last thing real quick, because I know you need to go. But transfer portal wise, what do you foresee being the frequency of signees or commitments, although you don't literally sign anymore? Do you see that happening in a bunch now? Do you see that over the next couple of months? How do you see that playing out? So the rules for transfers are, are a little bit different because um, there's nothing. All right, so I'll try to explain this where the average person can understand that's not, doesn't deal with a bunch of NCAA compliance. And so there's a transfer portal window that started the Monday after your last game. And it extends to, I think it's January 15th or, and, and y'all may have it in front of you, but I think it's January 15th or seven days after if you played the national championship game. Um, and that's the, that during that window is the time you can enter the portal. There's really no deadline on when you can exit. Um, and we can offer uh, transfers, what's called a grant in aid. There is no national letter of intent. Um, for transfer student athletes. Like the high school student athletes that are signing today, they're signing grant and aid scholarships and national letter of intents. Um, but for transfers, it's just grant and aid. And the grant and aid, uh, for an easy understanding, it binds the institution, West Virginia University, to the transfer student athlete. But it does not bind the transfer student athlete to the institution. So potentially a, a transfer student athlete could sign multiple uh, multiple granted aids uh, but because they're not binding. 
The real bind for the student athlete is when they start, or they enroll and then start classes at the transfer institution. So the first day of class here is January 9th. And so um, I think that is when you'll see some of the transfer people uh, that we're pursuing. Um, and, and just talking numbers. And also, Jed, if you want to go through, I don't know what y'all's time is, but I actually got some time, so I'll sit here. If y'all want to talk about these other signees, I will. I just didn't talk to y'all, then stew around waiting for uh, yeah. for next That's, messages. I tell you what, let's pull up the screen, pull up the visual, and we'll use that as our cue and make sure if Coach wants to hit on a couple key points, just work your way down the list. You don't even have to stick to one side of the ball. Make sure you just have a couple quick comments on anybody included there. Yeah, and I'll finish up going back to the portal. You know, really what we're doing to give give both of you guys and our viewers kind of, we got positions in need, um, but we don't have unlimited spots. And so it's not where um, you have all these guys in the portal and you just take every player you can. That's not the way it's going to work. Um, we're going to have anywhere from eight to maybe as high as 12 uh, spots for transfers. And we got to be picky, you know, and I, I'll give you an example, like um, just talking locally, because all our all our fans will know Zach Frazier is a great center. I think he's the best center in the country, but we're not out pursuing a center because we have what we think is the best in the country. Um, and so we're looking at real positions of need in the portal, obviously a wide receiver and defensive back. Those are the two biggest needs. Um We'd like to add some defensive linemen um, and, 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 a, and a pass receiving tight end. I think those are some of the top priorities. Um, and we've got a couple guys that are committed from the portal. We've got a couple other ones that haven't publicly uh, declared, but they are, they are committed as well. Um, and I think you'll continue as we move through the next really probably two weeks. You'll start seeing things that where – the uh, the transfer student athlete will release kind of where they're going, and so that's kind of how we'll play it. As far as these signees, you want to pull them up, and, and I'll be glad to talk talk about them a little bit. Keep I know the their families are, yeah, I know their families are watching. So I'll talk about the Jackson brothers. Um, and so Jordan Jackson, these guys are from Fairfield, Ohio, right outside of Cincinnati, and that's been an area that we've really worked. And, and Jordan Leslie and Shadon Brown have been have been working those guys and. Uh, we've been really close on getting some quality players from the Cincinnati area. So to get these guys in the mix from a really good high school program, Jordan played running back. He's really fast. Uh, we're recruiting him and signing him to play defensive back. Um, and he's played a little bit. He had a great camp here. That's when we off, we extended a scholarship to him uh, was after that camp, but he's a, he, he can run the hundred and under 11 seconds, going to be a real versatile player. And then Josiah, um, uh, his film really over the last three years has shown the ability to cover, you know, he's long. We wanted some length there. He's got versatility where we can move him around playing inside. Cause he's got some size uh, in third down packages. He's going to be here in January. Uh, Zach Keith, Zachariah Keith is a guy that, that our fans are going to know about in years to come. Um, he's long. He's ever bit of six, five, um, uh, He's very similar built to Sean Martin. And so now, you, like Sean Martin, we signed him. He's 240 pounds. Now he's 290, um, really long. And that's, that's kind of how this, I see the progression for Zach Keith. Uh, and I really believe that Sean Martin's going to be an NFL player, an NFL draft pick. Um, I think you saw some signs of that this year. And I really believe Zach, Zach Rye can grow into that same kind of mold. Uh, a guy that can play a five technique, a four eye, and, and is going to give some tackles in our league issues. Uh, Nick Craig is a is an offensive lineman who's not got a ton of publicity. All right, but after watching him play basketball and watching how he played his senior year, um, he, he'll be a multiple year starter here on the offensive line. I have no doubt about that. Um, talk about Ben Cutter. Ben Cutter uh, is a he's a he's a guy that loves playing football. And I think he's going to be very similar to a lot of the, the linebackers that our fan base is, is falling in love with over the, over the years. Uh, Cooper Young is a big 
uh, offensive lineman from an area that produces a lot of offensive line in Downingtown, Pennsylvania, outside of Philadelphia. He's going to be a, a mauler. Orion Fisher is a developmental player that is 6'5 plus, had one of the longest wingspans of anybody that's an edge rusher we've ever recruited. Uh, he's about 215 pounds. I bet he plays as a true freshman at around 240. Um, and, and he adds length. We needed to add length right there on the edge. There's a lot of length in this class. I see versatility, I see length, I see speed, and I see athleticism. And it puts you in position, positionally at least, to give you some options. I mean, you started talking about Bram on the offensive side, the different things that he might be able to do. You started talking about a couple of those pieces defensively. From a scheme standpoint, that makes you pretty versatile. We are, and, and we're going to go through some schematic changes defensively. Um, we play better and, and, and really – down the stretch, you know, if you take out the first half of Kansas State, really the last third of the season, we played good defense. Um, but there's some things we got to change, uh, especially in the secondary and, and cleaning up some of that. And some of it's getting um, getting players, and some of it's cleaning up schematics. But we want to be more versatile. We've got to get longer. We know that. Um, we've got to be able to stay in the same personnel groupings. Um, where we can give multiple looks out of the same personnel groupings. The more athletic and the longer you get defensively, the more opportunity you have to do that. Outstanding. Well, Neil, we appreciate your time. I know you've got a press conference which is coming up, and the list will continue to grow as the day and as the days go on. So we appreciate it, and hopefully every message that you're looking down on there is a good positive note. Yeah. Well, no, we just got we just got our, our 14th in, Johnny Williams. Oh. Um, from from Northeast High School in, in Macon, Georgia. He, uh, I'll tell you this, uh, Jed, you'll appreciate that. I, I went to do a home visit, and he took up the whole doorway. He's a big man's big man. Yeah, he couldn't, yeah. Even, yeah, you couldn't, yeah, you couldn't even. Yeah, you couldn't see by him. He's uh, he's six six and three twenty five, and he's a he's a he's a tackle that that we beat a lot of really good people for. And I think that's the other thing too, as you look at this class, is it goes down to who'd you beat. And you look at the schools that we beat. You know we're not beating we're not beating air. We're beating uh, teams that are that are not only uh, doing well recruiting, but they're also playing on Saturdays at a high level. So, guys, I appreciate. It. I know this takes a ton of work, and 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 I appreciate y'all y'all doing this today. All right, appreciate thank you, Neil. We Thanks. appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you. We invite you to stay Merry tuned. Christmas. National Signing Day program continues. We're with you for about another eight minutes. It's presented to us by Country Roads Trust, and we'll have more coming your way. Stay with us. We'll be back. Try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Coliseum, where the spirit of 1.8 million West Virginians wills you to victory. And all the people of Morgantown go bananas! I don't think I've ever seen this place as alive as it is tonight. This is as loud a building as we have been in this season. There, there's no place like this. They're going wild here at the Coliseum. Single game tickets are on sale now at WVUGame.com. You can make a difference by joining Country Roads Trust. Your membership gets you exclusive access to student athletes, signed memorabilia, in-person events, and so much more, while allowing the athletes to profit off their name, image, and likeness. Work on me, work on three, one, two, three, one! Becoming a member of the Country Roads Trust ensures that WVU stays on top of the NIO landscape in college athletics. That landscape includes trust athletes out in the community making a difference and representing WVU in a positive manner. The path to success has never been more clear and your support of NIO will help pave the way. Your membership has a direct impact on the lives of WVU student athletes now and in the future. To learn more about how you can support Mountaineer Athletics, go to join.countryroadstrust.com. Hey folks. Become a member of Country Roads Trust today. 
West Virginia University is a place where learning is an adventure, inside and outside. You'll become an innovator, a boundary breaker, an earth shaker. Choose your circle from 30,000 fellow mountaineers and choose your path from hundreds of majors and minors in a community that feels small. And you'll use this to get to class. You'll have room to find your people, your passions, and your purpose. Because we're a place where everyone fits. This is WVU. This is home. When you're choosing your heart care team, the stakes are high. You want answers and a clear path forward. But mostly, you just want your life back. The WVU Heart and Vascular Institute can help. Our cardiologists and heart surgeons are national and international leaders in heart care, solving the most difficult cases at West Virginia's number one ranked hospital and highest rated cardiac program by U.S. News and World Report. Your heart care is a choice. Choose the best. Now's your chance to join the Mountaineers for the 2023 season at Milan Pushkar Stadium. Fires the ball. Downfield. Makes the catch in the end zone. Touchdown, West Virginia. Secure your seats to watch the Mountaineers take on Pitt in the return of the Backyard Brawl, as well as five other marquee home games. Place your new season ticket deposit for just $99 at WVUGame.com. And that list is going to grow by one that you're looking at. It will go to 14 as we get ready to close up shop here. As uh, Neil, that's about as hot as you can get in addition. Boom, dynamically. You've just seen Johnny Williams's name appear, and uh, Neil literally took that text in while he was chatting with us. So let's take a look at a very, very big potential standout here for West Virginia. Uh, on the list, they've got him. Neil said he was 6'6". Six, six. They've got him on the list at 6'7", 315, so somewhere in that neighborhood, it doesn't take long to ID him on the field. He is a big human. Yeah, Tony, uh, Big John. He's one of these kids that when you watch the tape, you don't need the arrows to let you know where he is on the tape. He stands out, he jumps out. He's a, he's a monster. He's a 315-pound man mover, very raw but very talented. Once he gets his teeth into you, you're not shaking free. It's fun to watch the tape because you see the DBs, once he gets onto the second level, they scatter like buckshot. I mean, they're getting, they want no part of this. Uh, he's quicker in his pass set than you'd think, but it's gonna need some work. Uh, that's what you'd anticipate uh, on his pad level and his footwork. He's kind of a blank canvas. I talked to his coach, Johnny Williams. Again, another kid that was well coached. His, his coach uh, down at Northeast High School in Georgia was an All-American defensive back at Appy State. So he gets it. So from a technique standpoint, uh, I'm not surprised in seeing some of the things that I see. They ran it all, some zone, some ISO, some power, some counter. Obviously, when times were meaningful, when times were critical, they leaned on him. They went power behind him. They went ISO behind him. They had a young quarterback this year, so they leaned on the run game even more than ordinary. But uh, big man, and uh, that is a terribly exciting project for Mike Joseph, two-sport athlete. He's also a track guy. This says you sum up about the genes in that family, Tony. He has a twin sister, Jaleza, and she is a really good basketball player. So that's kind of what you're getting with this kid. He has those nimble, dancing bare feet that you'd expect or hope for on the edge, on the perimeter, against some of these edge rushers in the Big 12. I'm glad we got dancing beer there, in finally. there before, before, before things begin to wrap up. So that will be our segment to this point. We hope you've enjoyed the last three hours. The list now stands at 14. Neil Brown, who we just heard from a short while ago, will have a formal press conference, which will be available uh, this afternoon at WVUSports.com and on various other social platforms. So they hit the list, as you can see, from quarterbacks, tight ends, defensive backs, and as Neil said to us, uh, the emphasis now in the portal will be to go defensive backs, mm -hmm. linebacker, and wide receivers. Those would be the 
primary areas. And there's a ton of options in there, Tony. I mean, again, it's dynamic, it's changing every day. You hit refresh, you see new names in there. So stay tuned to that, but also stay tuned to how this class fleshes yep. out throughout the course of the, the next day and the coming weeks. Yep, there will be more names before the day is over. Thanks for being with us. Thanks to our crew here. We hope you've enjoyed National Signing Day presented by Country Roads Trust. Have a good day.